Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think we need to move the ship, guys. This is very stagnant. What do you think? Bridge, this nav. So our first uh, transect in of this dive is going to be at 1896 meters. That's about 10 meters off the bottom. Um, we just collected a water sample for eDNA sampling. Um, and hopefully some of our shore based scientists are going to call in and tell us about the exciting things that we're going to be seeing, which we don't have here. Um. Hey guys, a couple of us are on the call. Up. Fantastic. Could you introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about what we're going right, to be seeing so today? Let's see how that looks, pilot. Okay. And if it looks good, then I'll just extend the range. Uh, sure, I'll Copy. get off. We're Hi everyone, my name is Adrian Copeland, Sirius. and I am a as scientist as we in the ocean exploration. The ship start moving, I'll just start moving forward. For the midwater. Moving forward. And I'm joined with a couple stuff, other right? folks from our office if they want to introduce themselves. Okay. Uh, sure. I'm Thank Ashley you. Marandino, also right. with NOAA Office of Exploration. Um, I'm a benthic biologist, but also have expertise in midwater fishing. Oh, that was me. Oh, excellent. Thank I'm you. just centering up on your screen. Not sure if we Hi, have everyone. Else. My name is Isabel Moyer. I'm an intern. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my name is Isabel Moyer. I'm also with the Office of Ocean Exploration. I've been working with Adrian Copeland this summer on uh, midwater biology and the Marianas. So I'm excited to see what we're going to see today. Great. Thank you for joining us, Isabel. Okay. Hi, this is a video. I just want to make a comment out to the science group. Uh, if you look at stream three, I've modified the quad split. Sorry, Bridge. Uh, Midwater, upper left quadrant is the ROV primary camera. Lower left is the Sirius looking at the ROV. Upper right is our Knudsen that is looking at the EK60 uh, data. And the lower right quadrant is the Blue View sonar. Let me know if uh, you would like something else on those screens or if you want anything full screen on stream 3. Okay, while we wait for the transect to get set up, I could tell folks at home, I, I guess, a little bit about Copy. what we're doing today. Um, so, today we are exploring the midwater. So, the midwater of this water column between the surface and the seafloor is the largest and least explored biome on the planet. So, we're really excited to see what we can learn about it today. Um, so, what we're starting to do first is a deep water transect. Um, that's about 10 meters up from the bottom because we want to look at the benthopelagic coupling, which just means looking at the relationship between the animals on the benthos and then the animals in the pelagic or in the water column and seeing what we see at this depth right above the seafloor. And then we'll be proceeding shallower as we progress throughout the So day. the ship started um, moving about two minutes ago. Depth, okay, um, you see anything so I think maybe just on. And then we'll be anything. going up to nine and 700 meters right below the deep scattering layer that you can see on camera three. Yeah. Um, we'll also be monitoring the deep scattering layer um, throughout the day to plan for a transect within that depth um, once we get shallower. Oh, and it seems actually we have already here on the view. We haven't officially started yet, right? I think we probably should go ahead and say we're started, right? Uh, I think we're happy, aren't so we? We're moving. We're we trying to reach navigator. Looks like I've seen for some time. That is really look, cool. Look at that. <laughs> How beautiful. Can you track it? That is a Tino 4, yes. yes. All right. 
So do you guys wanna, are ready to start? Okay. All right, watch lead, this is now. So science, this is pilot. If you see stuff that might be of interest, try to let us know as soon as possible whether there's a sample request, just because we are gonna have to set up for that and not miss out on it. Will do. Thanks. Um, Nav, uh, we're ready to begin when you are. Uh, yeah, so let's begin the transect at 1251 UTC. Yeah, it seems that we have an idea here from Alan Collins in the chat room. Um, okay, so we're beginning the transect. You're full uh, Yes. Zero. Thank you. That's right, my face. But on a dark color. Okay, are we okay, clear so on this? Transect begins. It's too so close. There are some lighter colored ones that have been on So I'll get back out in the center, right? Yeah. All right, and so for those of you on shore, what yep. the pilot has requested is that it, it's a little harder to set up for sampling in the midwater, and so if you see something you want, please shout it out loud or shout it in the chat room as soon as you possibly can so that we have the best option to collect. Um, so don't be shy. Uh, we should mention we have five suction Eight. containers, canisters, so you have... So I think what we have today is the opportunity for five different suction samples and five different water samples. We just collected one water sample Fish at lower the beginning center. of our dive, um, but right before the transect began. Oh, and we've got our first fish also here now in view. Mike Becky on here. Hi, Mike. Mike Becky on here. Uh, Ellen Collins has requested that if we see any tenophores that have the four horn-like structures one and let him go and push really out. I gotta push out those. fast because okay. yep. we're moving. So we'll be keeping an eye out for those. Sure. Okay, that gives me a little time. Science, uh, let us know if you need the uh, pilot on the uh, broadcast OKX channel. Right now, we're all still on the second. Yeah, so that PXRD started five minutes ago. Do you guys channel. feel good with that um, speed? Okay. Oh, yeah, gonna that. stand with them. We're having the first jellyfish of the dive as well. They're coming into view. You want that? Go ahead, take it. Good lighting, right? Oh, yep. Oh, Look they're so that. cute. I know they've seen also some of these jellyfish in the previous um, in the previous expedition. Just going through some notes here to I see. I wonder what kind of jellyfish it is. It, it has such yeah. it has short tentacles. Yeah. And what's the body of the jelly jellyfish called? So Isabel is saying this might be an atolla. An atolla. Oh, there's one more another time. thing in the left left. Actually, there's two things. Yep. I was gonna say there's. Oh, and there's a. Uh, one of those colonial animals to the right. Is it a salp or a siphonophore or something possibly, like that? Possibly a salp. Oh, how beautiful. Oh, look at that. Oh, it chats itself through the water. Really nice. So this is a narco medusa. The bell is the main body, which yeah. makes sense, right? It looks like a bell. Um, oh, and I assume these maybe are known by their... Yeah, we're having... Alan would like us to okay. collect this if we can. Let me ask the pilot. Pushing back out. Can we collect this if we can? Pilot, this is watch lead. Go ahead, watch lead. Is there any possibility we can collect that jellyfish we just saw? I <laughs> can back up and see if I can reacquire it. it That's not going to happen. It's probably not going to happen. That was it blowing off <laughs> yeah. to the left. That no. The lag there was like a minute too late. That was a... we got to know much sooner, guys. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, so unfortunately we're not able to collect that jellyfish. I, I think what I'm hearing from Pilot is that um, if we want to collect something, you kind of have to say it immediately. Like... That's fantastic. We need to collect it, and we will relay that information. Um, otherwise, it's going to go by us too quickly. You're going to be on the hair trigger with the hydraulics, and I'll mm -hmm. try to slurp it in. But they are Short ready out and hydraulics eager up and to pump on. get us cool samples. Well, pump as soon as I get near the mouth of it, right? Okay, white holothurian right of center. Going up toward the top of center. Yeah, we have now here an Olothurian coming to the center of the view. Looks kind of similar to some that we, we've seen out yesterday. Getting up high. Yeah, so that's, that's actually a 
that's actually a pelagic holothurian. Mm -hmm. um, so so uh, white the object to the, the right of center, commenting how upper we've right. seen actually quite a bit of these pelagic holothurians throughout the water column. So a lot of those white bodies you see are them. Mm -hmm. And this is more than many of us have seen on, on transects in the past. So it's really interesting to see all those. Yeah, and would this be a uh, pelagic Nemertian now that we're seeing here, possibly? And while we're waiting Doesn't for an identification on that, yeah. the that the fish that we saw earlier um, was the black fork black fork tail fish was a slick head. Um, yeah. Some are mm. benthopelagic, but some Super are strictly bathypelagic. So, and this one could, I guess, be either because we're only 10 meters off the bottom. Get the shrimp. Go ahead. Oh, well, we've got it. So yesterday we Tilting had slime, down. and today we have slickhead fish. I like slickhead better than I like slime. What is that? A shrimp? That's a oh, shrimp. Yeah, that is a shrimp. Looks like uh, similar to one of those. Uh, nema uh, yeah, similar to one of those nematocarcinos. Let it go. Also, a number of them yesterday, but mm. probably this uh, would be spinning in a left. Group. Still, it is very long antennae. But indeed, quite a lot of these um, Olathurians. Not sure if anyone in the chat would happen to know the species or the genus of these. It says shrimp. <laughs> 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 and that's, I assume, another Holothurian. Yes. I guess we won't point out every Holothurian dancing in the water column. Although they but are they're, quite they're delightful they're and they're, they're pretty plentiful, they're, yeah, right? They're quite a lot. Strand lower left. Ooh, that's that to oh. the left. Yeah, this is my Kino question. Four. Mm -hmm. I Might want to be a sample. Um, these these holothurians aren't actually the pelagic holothurians. There's, there's actually only one, I think, one species. It's certainly one genus that's a pelagic holothurian. These are actually benthic holotherians that get up off the bottom and swim around. Yeah, We're coming up on a, a sidipid cynophore right now. It's a black sidipid with its two long tentacles and then the dropper lines coming off of it that sets up a uh, basically a fishing net. Center All those up. dropper lines have sticky cells on them so that if plankton bumps into them, they can uh, reel it in. Yeah, look how, how long those tentacles So the, uh, the holothurians are actually bento, bentopelagic or demersal. They're swimming up off the bottom, but then they'll settle back down on the bottom because they eat mud. Mm -hmm. Okay, clear so you can and push so out. so how far off bottom do you think they go, Mike? Will they try? Oh, will, that, will that's they... a really good question. I've, mm -hmm. seen, I've seen them you know, dozens of meters off the bottom. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of different benthic holothurians that will get up and swim like this but all the ones we're seeing now sea i think are a single species not a sea spider which i don't know the name of long-legged i forget what, what is that thing going by too fast yeah that's why i didn't call it out we're coming up on an isopod this is a munoxid isopod and sometimes we call them water walkers because Pushing they have uh, uh, the tips of their legs have uh, little filaments that go out and look like feathers and they they swim by by uh, uh, moving their legs as if they're uh, walking on water. Wow. Jelly lower center. Oh, we have uh, another one of those. Going down pretty fast. So, Mike, if you're on the line still, what do you hope to see today? What do others hope to see? Well, this is truly explore, exploration. You know, I, I, I hope to see whatever we can find. Below us. And we're going Clear. to see a lot of jellies. So, uh, this, this environment is dominated by gelatinous things, like, like this jellyfish that we're looking at right now. Um, I personally am hoping to see some, uh, some squids or some level at this octopods. Point? Or okay. I, I'm also interested in kind of snails that spend their whole lives swimming. Really? Pink upper left. Hmm. Okay. So 
if we see any of those, I'll be happy to. So but most of what we're going to see is going to be uh, gelatinous stuff. Very cool. Thank you, Mike. Okay. It's going too high. I'm going to yep. go back on mute for a while. <laughs> Hopefully not too long. Oh, what's that? I'll go for the bag on right. If it's disappearing. It's funny we saw it and then it sort of faded into the distance. Do we want the upper swing arms to point oh, down slightly? Uh, I think that looks I think yes. Me. That that would illuminate the front of the vehicle yeah, a little like better. A Is that what you saw, Mike? The uppers are down. Well, partially. Are you talking about the wiggly thing? That was a uh, tilt uh, down. The wiggly thing, I think, was a Nemerdian, a flat worm. Uh, oh, no. A it's lot the of thing these, that just is going to disintegrate. Probably was an abandoned larvacean out. Uh, the larvaceans um, might top off this screen complex, left. large complex house mm, out of not mucus, chase that. which is it's basically a big filter that they center. use. Uh, they center. have a tail. Yeah. Uh, and they Fish. beat the tail to set up a current that goes through the filter. And the filter well, right. uh, catches very small particles, and then the, the larvacean eats the particles up with them. And after a while, the, uh, the oh, they go to the fish. Flare, after flare while, just went away the, completely. Uh, the mucus gets flushed no. up, and the larvacean like, will uh, abandon it that. and then make a new mucus out. I don't want it into the lens like that, so... Most of what we've been seeing down here is in the, the holothurians, the sea cucumbers, swimming up off the bottom. Uh, and pan HD2 down to sort of... Larvacean houses. So in case you guys do a sample, be ready. And so you'll expect, Mike, when, um, when we move into our next transect, which is um, at 1,200 meters, so we're going to be moving almost 700 meters up into the water column, that we would stop seeing those benthic holothurians um, in entirely, correct? The geologist is going to ask questions that are not very smart. Yeah, I think mm. as soon as we get out of the benthic boundary layer, we're, Left we're of going center, to stop small seeing the globular. Mm. But we can still see uh, larvacean because they're throughout the entire water. Island. Thank you. Oh, and what is that? So we're zooming in again on another larvation house here. Oh. Um, you can see the, the marine snow collected around the mucus housing on the outside. That was a really good view. Thanks, Pilot. Got it. That is really cool. So for those yeah, on this, this larvacean house, you can see there's an inner structure and an outer structure. The inner structure is more complex, and then there's a there's a ball yeah, that goes disappearing on us. around that inner structure. Uh, and it, the whole thing functions to, to catch very small plankton that the uh, larvaceans can eat. So with a little bit of stronger current, it actually just disintegrates, like we've seen earlier? Um, when they're fresh, they, I think they don't after. disintegrate as easily. After they've been abandoned, they do. So will this be, again, one of those larvation houses, probably? Yeah, what you, what you really see there is the inner structure of the larvation house. Okay. And the outer structure is, is probably still there, but it's very, very difficult. Very, to see. very transparent, yeah. Okay. I'm going to push out. But I don't see the larvacean in there, so it's, I, my guess is it's been abandoned. When it's in there, you can you, often you can see the tail beating. Okay. 
the animal itself looked like sort of like a little tadpole. Copy. Fish, center right. We'll Never mind. We can find one with the larvation inside. And that was a fish that just swam off, I think. We should be seeing, uh, during the dive today, we should be seeing quite a few arrow worms, I expect. Mm -hmm. uh, they're called keto gnats. Yeah, they're, and they're, they're really voracious predators, but they're not related to anything. Do you still feel it's like it's going towards kind of worm the ship called stop? an arrow no, worm. it's still moving, but I'm just, just looking at the... I haven't the seen any yet, but they'll probably yeah, be higher up in the water column. for a minute. So as long as I'm pushing forward along with like Sirius, it's definitely... Like, we've seen a few kind of in the background swimming around. White, so nothing just upper yet. right of center, stripe. Going to upper right corner. Mm. Just swim off. Too small. Uh, strand lower right of center. Okay. Let it drift across. And we're seeing here now a string coming into view. Oh. Go for the bales. That? Yeah, that's a that's a siphonophore. It, um, that's the kind it's that only has two swimming bells at, at yeah. the end. There's, there's two major kinds of the wow. down wow. here. This, this type, of which there are a bunch of different species, and then another type that has a whole bunch of different swimming bells, or similar swimming bells, up at one end. That's a calicophorin siphonophore? This is a calicophorin. Calicophorin yes. siphonophore. Yes. That is really cool. There we go. There is going to be a lot to learn today. Oh, yeah. And a lot or to mispronounce for me. Let's get that hollow thorium <laughs> really good. Not just for a geologist, but also okay, for, the biology, a, for the benthic biologist. The yeah. top right, I guess. Yeah. Oh, what's Go that top in the right. upper right? It's, again, one of those tenophores. Yeah. That may be the one they asked the for a collection before. It does look like a tenophore, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, that's, so is this... That's a low-bait tenophore. Yeah, low-bait tenophore. That, it looks like a... looks like a... That's a heroic oh. thing, but... Uh, oh, I'll look at that. I'll see what Alan has to say yeah. in the chat. Yeah, Alan Bath thinks it's a Bathos heroic also. Bathos heroic. The thing about these is... When, above me. when we're teaching biology, we teach us uh, that uh, these tenophores swim by beating rows of cilia on their mm -hmm. sides. Which is true for most tenophores, and these have those rows of cilia. But these actually have these big Push lobes, and they swim by flapping the lobes. So they, when they're swimming, they, they look a lot more like a jellyfish uh -huh. uh, swimming. I, I, I sort of think it looks like a frog kick, but uh, that just confuses things. Okay, drifting. So that allows it to actually propel in the in the water faster than just by beating those uh, rows of cilia, I guess. Yeah, I would think so. Dot just right of center. I think I see arms sticking out from it. Uh, I'm not sure what you're looking at. 
It's the white dot on the right. But this way to go. Center? Uh, no, it went up the right. Okay. It did not have arms. Lower left, Mika's house. Want to chase that? Get a snap on it. Okay, so this looks again like one of those larvation houses Let it and go. still empty. Tongue what would the below, larvation look left. like if it were actually mm -hmm. in its house? So apparently it looks like a tadpole. A tadpole, okay. Center? Is that another larvation house? I think so. And we can see it because it beats its, uh, That's its tail. Subtle. Okay. Very small. Going invisible. Not that I've ever seen one, though. <laughs> Full wide? Yeah, you're full wide. Another larvation house left of center. See if this one has the larvation inside. Nope. That one's swimming. It yeah. Doesn't look like. Yeah, I can see it swimming inside. Is it in there? Oh, wait. It does seem like there is looks a tail. Like it, yeah, it looks like there is a tail inside. Uh, oh, I missed it. I said there was a waving. Yeah, there's somebody on Somebody home in the larvation <laughs> house? In the middle, there's, there's sort of a heart-shaped structure. That's the head of the larvation, and then the tail comes off to the left from that. And you can see the, the tail undulating up and down. That was the actual animal. White line at the bottom. There's another one here now at the bottom. Fish. Uh, that is fish. Looks a bit like a small red tail. It's swimming in a funny position. I feel like we see a lot of the swish, the fish that swim, swim head in, down yeah. in, in the deep sea. I feel like yeah. that's not uncommon. Yeah. I bet Mike can tell us about yeah. that or... Uh, possibly someone else. Yeah. This is actually a rat tail. It's a, a grenadier uh, in the family Macroridae. Macroridae. And it's, it's a demersal fish. So it spends most of its time close to the bottom, uh, actually swimming, not quite that head down, to, uh, with a head down. Going for the south. Okay. Moving around in the bottom looking for things to eat. Looking at the head. Gonna get in too close. That's a fish that has come up yeah. off of the bottom, yeah. Full line. and it's mixing with the pelagic animals in benthic boundary layer. And we're getting closer to another cyphonophore, uh, and also something that they're trying to focus on that I can't tell. How's tracking, guys? Oh, it looks like another one of those holothurians. Yeah, it's there's been lots good the whole and time. lots and lots of these holothurians. Oh, these holothurians, yeah. Fish lower bottom. Like I said, they 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 go down to the bottom and they actually eat mud and digest organic matter out of the mud. But then when they think they have to go to a place, they'll swim up into the water column and drift along and then settle back down again to, to Red start dot, eating jelly, in the new patch. Lower right. Mm -hmm. It's moving pretty quick. Try to take it, but I think it's going to get in. Oh. Yeah. We have something here now coming into view. It's a, it's a small jellyfish as well. Really, no, red. Oh, just yeah, just went past. That's very bright color. Another jelly lower right. Yeah, and Alan Collins said that was a little hydrozoan. Left of center. Oh, was it? 
slight curved line. And we got this walking guy. Center. And now we see another one of those water walkers. It's an isopod. It's related to roly polies in your garden. Empty. And that looks like a discarded larvation house, I believe, kind of breaking down. Pink shrimp left upper. Turns out these larvation houses, when they're abandoned, they're really important in carbon cycle because they uh, they get a whole bunch of stuff uh, stuck to the mucus, and then because they're fairly large, they uh, they sink really quickly into the deep sea. Oh, that looks like a mycid actually. That the uh, the shrimp-like thing that's that's beating its uh, its legs there. I think that was a, a mycid. So the the, uh, the larvacean houses, they've been documented really well in the uh, Monterey Canyon area. And uh, Bruce Robeson and his team have shown that uh, they're extremely important White for, for transporting just carbon left the center. out of the, the surface and, and upper midwaters down into mm -hmm. the deep sea. And yeah, that's a good shot of one of our hollow And down to the bottom, actually, because that's, that's the major source of food for the bottom, is, is stuff like that sinking. Oh, he is super small. So what do, w what would those casings be made of, Mike? They're they're, they're made out of mucus. Mucus, just yeah, okay. The animals yeah. secrete a lot of mucus. Yeah. 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 And this Good is shot. another Good of float on that uh, one. Whole I think this is called Aparima. Aparima. And they've been documented. We caught him far away, and he's not moving. Right. Time, uh, in the abyssal plains. Hmm. This one is not moving so, so much. Study, uh, that one's not moving at all. Yeah, no, it's very. <laughs> well, it's just drifting right now. It's what? You can see it's it's uh, it's gut basically, and the interesting thing there is that they form a loop because they eat sediment. Uh -huh. They have to uh, be very good at digesting what what they they eat, so they 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 keep it in their digestive tract longer by having a really long digestive tract. And the only way to fit it in a body is for it to loop around, and so you can you can see the looping of the uh, digestive yeah. system there. Yeah, it seems really long. For efficient yeah, digestion. Can, we can even see the, yeah, the sediment in it. Before they take. There he goes. Wow. Yeah, there's still some sediment in there, but usually before they take off to swim around, they will discharge okay, most of their something down, pushing um, out sediment. So they leave piles of uh, of feces on the bottom before they, they take off to swim away. And those are what we see normally, like these coils. Tina four, too fast. Um, yeah, the coils of, yeah. of fecal matter yeah. on the bottom, it seems that there are orthurians around. Alan wants us to remember that if we see another one of those cydipid tenophores, you'd like to try and collect it. Okay. Can you re-describe what that looks like I to us? I believe we collected a holothurian without that's Mike, trying. That's Mike the, uh, the little thing okay. that looks like a ball with two long tentacles coming off of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. It looks sort of like... the one with a black Lower body. center. Okay. Where? Uh, okay. So it looks sort of it like the seeker in Harry Potter. It's Except it was maybe. black. It had that uh -huh. circle, circular, yeah. Yeah. and then it had the, the long pieces. There's a we, fish. Distant center. With much longer uh, appendages. Oh. Right. Yeah, we won't a super seeker, as it were. Yeah, it's right there for sure. The golden snitch. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of. We'll <laughs> the golden now. Snitch. Another eel fish, top center. Oh, yeah. 
fish there at a distance. And an eel. It looks and like up in the distance. Yeah. Watch yeah, it looks like an alator. Do you want to let them know that's that? Another one that's come yeah. up off the four, bottom. They, the upper center, they want to collect them. it. Usually okay, get ready on the bottom. With their noses down by the mud. Okay, coming out of auto depth. Come wide. Oh, but this Come wide as soon as you can, Roland. You're full wide. actually different from what Alan was asking So are we earlier. collecting this or not, Science? Um, is this the Tina 4 you want? I don't think so. One? I don't think it has yeah, a black body, does yeah, it? Yeah, no, it looks... you got to let us know. It does seem to have those long... Oh, uh, no, this is, this is not the black no. one. No. You don't want it? Oh. No. This is this is not the black one, Mike? Okay. You're sure? Oh. Wait, Snap getting in. closer, it looks black. No, now, it look, now it looks wait. black. It doesn't look black to me. Wait, oh, it is. It oh, is. Wait, oh, yes, look at yes. that. Take it is that one. If we can okay. get oh, back. Wow. Oh, it's uh, running away. That is the right one. Chase oh, it. Wow. Okay. Well, I need help on Mini Zeus. Put Mini Zeus on, uh, yeah, on monitor right, please. And yep, Slurp, you ready try. to Slurp? They're getting the Slurp out. Watch it. This is enough. If we get this, it's going to go into canister. Inside your lens. It's inside my lens. i got to back up and... And as they're doing that, you can, for people that are listening, you can tell that the way this is swimming is by beating the. Okay, if you ready? It's moving around too much with my thrust. Sides. I think. This swims like a classic Yeah. Okay. Okay. Different from the one with the load. Oh. Okay. Delta okay. How am I doing relative to you? I'm coming up. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Be ready to slurp. It is tiny, okay. Go ahead and start slurping. It's coming into okay, the main I'm camera again. Uh, it's camera too close to me. Jeez, this thing's tiny. I think we're going to have to let it go. i got to push out. Okay, slurp off. Okay, so we're okay. very sorry, shore-based scientists, but it, it got away from us too quickly. But we will keep looking for one just like that, and next time we'll trust the pilots when they say, is this what you want to collect? <laughs> Yeah, watch out for the drawer. No, watch the uh, port, port rock, rock, rock box. Yeah, that was my fault too. They have eagle eyes in this. In my video, it's yeah. a little delayed from yours. Mm -hmm. When I first saw it, it, it looked white because of the reflection. But then, mm -hmm. as we got closer, once it gets inside of me, trying to back up, just yeah, the wash. Yeah, we also need to account for the latency in the communication. Might be able to close yeah. the rock box by pivoting left. It always takes a little bit yeah. of time for us to check with the. Shore based scientists, and then I'll to get I'll start an right, and then I'll yeah. spin hard left, and it'll close. Yeah, I think it's. I, I think it's safe to just tell the pilots Ready? that if they think it's something we want, they they're probably right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, that didn't do it. You might want to just bring the wing in and see. If bring the wing in, drawer close, and then wing out, and it'll close itself. So it's watch amazing it. how many of these swimming sea cucumbers we see. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Wing in, drawer, close, so and then wing out. If we're over a more uh, rocky substrate or soft substrate, if they're all up in the water no. column looking for new, for a new area to know. set to settle on. Yeah, but br bring drawer all the way in, and it and the the shilling should snag it and have close seen it. We've seen a few yesterday and the day before, but not these many. So mm -hmm. yeah, this is really. No, I don't think it's gonna. You know, it's too low. Yeah, I think it's past the uh, um, color chart. Yeah. Uh, just so leave Mike, it there. It's not going to hurt anything. Let's go ahead and just keep going. We'll fix it when we finish off this transaction. Off towards England, there's, there's an area called the Port Hina Push it back plane. out of the main yeah. image. And there's been studies there for, the for decades Port now box. where they, they've actually assembled time series looking at the, the benthic okay. things that live on the abyssal plane there. And... One of the things they discovered was they'll, they'll see a few sea cucumbers Watch and a few this cucumbers. Is cucumbers. The thing was like suddenly this. Be Go ahead now. Tiny. Uh, so golden we right noticed about, about five minutes ago that, that a small, very Aparima. small authorian went into uh, jar one. We don't really know the great when we caught it. Wow. It was by mistake. Well, but, well, um, we weren't slurping. It just went in there. Yeah, exactly. So, And then they would disappear again. 
Uh, then, the, yeah, the population All drops right, back dark down. All right, jelly. Go ahead. Fluctuate. Jelly on the right. Did you change your head? No. Uh, yeah, maybe I'm video kind of worked with here. survey to, to see if nice they can get a time there. when that little whole oh. terrarium went in. But yeah, oh, I'm going to name it. Oh, is that a black um, pinafore off to the right? Sample to no, it's buy jelly. It, and then we'll, My video we'll use broke. the other canisters. No, it yep. was a jellyfish. We're imaging it. I think I have to reboot. Okay, watch lead also, just to let you know, we have about five, mi about ten minutes left in the transect. Thank you so much. Um, and so shore based scientists, we have ten transect, minutes left pilot. in this transect, and then the next... Um, we'll let it go. The next transect we will be doing, there I want to make sure, is 1,200, is that correct? Yeah, that's 1,200. Yep, and so we'll, when we, uh, after we ascend to 1,200, when we finish this transect in ten minutes, we will take another water sample when we're at the 1,200 yep. depth. I believe that's what the shore base scientists uh, were interested in learning about. And then we'll do another 45-minute transect. If they, that is a narrow worm, one of those kids of gnats seemed a bit big. Upper center fish swimming. Oh, and we've got is that a shark? That is a shark. We've got our first shark also to die. That's it. Very at the distance, but... Oh, and the jellyfish we just saw, Alan is here saying that it could be a tracking medusa. What's this? Center left? Salp, I think. On it. You looking for the chain? Yep. So that looks yeah, like another string. one of those siphonophores. Yeah, oh, no, that's oh, a hylothurian yeah, and a siphonophore, yeah. right? I think that's just a mucus strain. Yeah, it's like a, yeah, just a mucus strain there. Oh, oh and there goes our shark. shark. Yes. Wow. That is really cool. I think it's similar to one of so that we've saw yesterday. Oh, I have no idea. I mean, I don't think you want me trying to ID no. sharks or fish or <laughs> yeah, anything like that. I think this is a lantern shark, um, which is it, usually they're down on the bottom. But again, we're seeing a lot of bottom stuff swim up yeah. into the water. I've got to let it go. Thanks, Mike. Trying to find you another black Tina for. Larvation house with live upper left. There's another one of those larvation houses coming into view now, and this one <coughs> seems to be inhabited. That is it. Uh, I it's wait, to point see. it out to me. Show me where it is. <laughs> oh, it just went off the screen. It's going over me. Yep. One day I'm going to see the larvation in the larvation house. <laughs> he was in there, but he wasn't kicking. Circular object off right.
ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ lower center four dots in a row where bottom as well i guess this coins are down they're lined up yeah it seems that they're just the olathurians but very nicely lined up uh possible tino four center right oh, yep got it coming into view another tino four it's to our right it's very white i wonder if it could be the same thing because earlier they it also didn't seem black and then as we approach it actually Rolling. turned Stay. into that black color so i wonder if this is something it's that looking we dark should on the snap shell. it snap it snap it snap in oh, that's yeah. it that's it looks like it so okay Hydraulics. Let's see if we can get this. It, it does seem like the, it's the, um, this black. Going auto depth off. Watch our depth. Ellen is typing excitedly. Yeah. Ready to slurp. Start slurping. It's going in. Going in. Be gentle with it. Be gentle with Body's it. Body's in. Jar light on. It's inside off. the jar. Excellent. Thank you, pilot. Jar two. Going back down. So we did get the black CD pit comb jelly. Okay, 10 and meters off. I'm going to push back out. For. So Draw in when catch. you can. Nice job, co pilot. You want to clear jar too? Okay, pilot, that is five minutes left on the transect. And Ken Sulak, who is a fish expert, uh, says that that shark. With the squaliform in the family. And let's go ahead and turn on that jar light so in case we get it next time. Uh, genus either Centrosimnus or Simnodon. Nice snag there, pilot. Teamwork. Just a minute here as I'm logging in the sample that we just collected. If we can get another one of those, it would be good to get a good video of it to go along with them. Video of what the SERP sample or the Tina Four the whole thing? Yeah, no, just a good visual a quality highlight. Yeah, it's tough to take our time with video and get the slurp. You know, right. no, no, once no. it comes no. inside of my. No, you misunderstand me. I definitely know that the priority was that, but now that we've got one, uh, if we see another one, let's yeah. see if we can get some quality video. Understood. Yeah, I agreed. Yeah, four minutes left to do that. Uh, fish left of center. Another Tina for lower center, or maybe jelly. I have a guess as to what that fish was, jelly. but I don't think I could say it over the internet. Okay, so I was just now logging in those that sample we just collected. Mm. So again, this jellyfish that we've seen yep. earlier also going by very fast. Looks like a living uh, Tina for a bilobe. Nope. Mm, yeah. And here we have again one of those Tina fours we saw earlier on, which had these extended flaps. Yeah, so well, they don't only. They've got a red gut. Mm hmm. Sometimes people call them the blood belly jelly because of the red gut. The reason that it has a red gut is because there's pigment there. So if it eats something that is bioluminescent, something that can light up, mm -hmm. uh, that the, the prey in its stomach doesn't give its location away to a predator. So they, they have pigment around their gut to keep the luminescence from the prey from showing off where they are. 
Okay. Look at that. Nice. Oh, that was nice. Pushing out. Is that worth looking at? Uh, I think it's going to be too close yeah, by the time close. I center. So I guess that was the battle zero again. South center. Uh, it's uh, Cyphonophore. Oh, it's again one so of the Cyphonophore. Right right so it seems to be... Or not go for it. It seems to be very... Um, uncommon Going away here, from actually. Me. Yeah, I so know. But then it's going like to come to me in a second. Now? Yeah, and Alan would like to get some really good video of this if we can stop him. Right. Uh, Let's see if we can get, get good, good video of it, yes. Okay, I'm going to get out of auto depth and chase this thing as soon as we speak. Coming up, coming up. Yeah, Off he not goes. Being very cooperative. I don't think no. I can chase him, he's too quick. Yeah. No, he's gone. Get he's reeled in his fishing gear. <laughs> okay, auto depth back in. Watch lead this enough. Nice, nice flying. Okay. Thank you for the show. Thank you, Roland. Okay, I'm going to spin right and push out underneath you. Maybe just come up so five or so like meters. just notated that we finished this midwater transect. Watch, lead this is now. Uh, we just finished the transect at 1336. We're going to get in tow formation and then go up to 1200 meters. Perfect. Okay, reciprocal heading, pushing out underneath you. Copy. Okay, so for those uh, joining us from shore, we're now starting to ascend to the next uh, start point of the second transect. So that will be at uh, 1,200 meters. So we've there now we just left the transect at 1,900 meters okay, at the, on the depth. Just uh, need to uh, at the, uh, come up a little layer. bit. Go ahead and clear your auto head, please. So we will now take a few minutes to get to the 1200 meter transect start. All right, once we get to like a delta of 10, why don't you go ahead and punch it in? Yeah, I'm just going to leave Z-Bias in at negative 30 and then just stick lock it. Yeah, let's see how 30 settles with what I've got dialed in here. Watch, leave this is now. Thanks. Shall we fix that drawer? Uh, so I think the other watch lead told me that the idea was to take an isking sample at 1200. Is that still the mm -hmm. idea? Maybe. Copy. Might as well just go snatch All right. it. You want to copy that? Weighing in. Hydraulics are on. use your fingers like that generally thank you Levi
aircraft parts. And then co-pilot, before you kill hydraulics, that lower swing arm on the starboard side mm -hmm. is half, not halfway deployed, but it's a little bit deployed. Did you mean to do that or? Okay. Yeah, I think maybe when you were moving the wings or something. Um, uh, so it's gonna be like all the way outboard and then stowed. Okay. Go ahead, watch lead. Uh, that is correct. That 1200 will be doing uh, battle number two. Yeah, there you go. That looks better. Uh, when we get to 1200, you guys can get set up and then we'll take an Iskin bottle. 1200 Niskin. Yep. Copy that. Go ahead, Rich. Uh, one question, can you make the heading change as we are moving? Probably not, right? Or Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, go ahead. And then new heading was going to be 170. Copy. Thank you. Okay. Ship is going to change the heading to starboard 20 degrees. Um, they say that they can do the heading change as they are uh, moving, so. Okay. Should be fine. How did you feel with that speed? It was good. I what, it wasn't flowing too fast? -ish? Yeah, what do you guys think? I thought it was good. At times I felt like I wish I had just a little more time, but then again, you go slower and you're not going to see much. So, okay. So perhaps this is actually a good timing for me also to make a small introduction to all the folks that are following us from Portugal or for from Portuguese speaking countries, so I'll do a small introduction also in Portuguese now. Uh, bom dia a todos, bem-vindos uh, à terceira expedição da Voyage to the Ridge. Nós estamos aqui a bordo do navio do Oceanus Explorer da NOAA, com a Ocean Exploration da NOAA e a Global Foundation for Ocean Exploration. Eu sou Joana Xavier uh, e ao longo desta expedição sou a líder científica para a área da Biologia e comigo tenho a minha colega Deb Glickson. Um, que é a líder científica para a parte da geologia, Casey Cant Cantwell, que é a coordenadora da expedição. Um, nós estamos aqui no nosso terceiro mergulho um, desta expedição. Um, estamos uh, a fazer um mergulho na coluna d'água right a cerca de 35, a cerca de 35 milhas náuticas a oeste da ilha de São Miguel. E estamos a sul da Baía de Irondel, que é uma zona aqui no Plateau dos Açores bastante profunda. E o principal objetivo deste mergulho é explorar e caracterizar uh, a fauna que se encontra na, na coluna da água, aqui na zona do, do, do Plateau dos Açores. E, portanto, o que estamos a fazer, começamos uh, aos 1.900 metros, uh, na zona uh, de interface uh, entre a, a área mais bentónica e a área pelágica. Um, e faz, fizemos o nosso primeiro transeto de cerca de 45 minutos na coluna de água uh, e agora começamos a subir e vamos fazer transetos aos 1200 metros, aos 900 metros, aos 700, 500 e depois novamente aos 300. E portanto este é um mergulho muito diferente dos mergulhos que temos vindo a seguir. Um, tem sido mais dedicados a, a fazer a caracterização uh, quer geológica Uh, daqui da região quer uh, a caracterização das comunidades bentónicas, principalmente aquelas dominadas por esponjas e corais, uh, mas é aqui na coluna d'água que também vamos ver uh, formas de vida muito diferentes, muito distintas, toda a parte de plâncton, um, 
que de facto uh, nos, nos costumam entusiasmar muito. Espero que gostem do mergulho uh, e vamos, vamos dando pequenos sumários ao longo do mesmo. Aproveitem. Go ahead, watch leap. Uh, no, I think, yeah, you said when we get to 1200, we are currently passing 1600. Um, Actually, this is now, so it should take us about 13 minutes to get to 1200. They're gonna get set up. Once we are in flying configuration, we'll call back and then we'll take the Niskin and then we'll start the transect right after that. Somebody's got an open mic, they're shuffling around. Oh, I think that's Brian. Go ahead, Rich. Uh, yeah, no, uh, we're good down here. Copy.
Yeah, I think they're both on. We got it to work nicely with battery power, and then we turn the power back on, and everything just worked. Yeah, I think I think we have a mystery right now, but it's working really nicely. Hmm. We might be in different water too, so I we'll have to fiddle with the angle. Although the ship is still making way to the north east. So it looks like they're no longer moving in zero four zero. That's zero two zero. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought we were going to see a, s a funny move and then it start to go back to the zero four zero again, but it doesn't look like it. Yeah, I think they're about to finish with that heading change. Yeah. Um, but because the transom should still be going at a zero four zero. And that is correct actually, yeah. So when they started the move I put that marker A frame. It's been drifting, it's zero been moving four at zero, zero four zero. Yeah. yeah. So what we see makes sense I think. Okay. You guys are passing thirteen ninety five. Another six minutes or so? Uh go ahead, Rich. Yeah. Copy that. Okay, heading change complete. So I'm going to let you stop at 1200 and I'll just keep coming up to get our delta to 20. Okay.
I'll see 1300. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Disoriented the little guy. Yeah. <laughs> took mm -hmm. him for the tilt -o, tilt -o whirl. Yeah, 30 meters a minute is pretty quick. Fifty meters to go. Now this is watch leap. Go ahead, watch leap. So we're gonna take a uh, Niskin bottle at the beginning of this transect, I believe. Uh, yeah, that is correct. We'll get to twelve hundred. The pilots will get information, and then we'll call back and take that Niskin bottle. I'll let you know when we when we will. Thank you so much. Hey, Sean, we're just about to stop. Okay. So that Sitting in the water column, yeah. you'd never expect them to center? swim the way that they do. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, it's and kind of mesmerizing. Is, yeah, this, this must be a cave of gnats, so one of those arrow worms. It's also swimming down fat, and that's it. Let them cool. go. And that's why they're called arrow worms. They just shoot off <laughs> as an arrow. Okay. <laughs> I think the methods of locomotion of all these things are kind of surprising. They look very slow and just kind of complacent to drift through the water column and then all of a sudden they dart off the screen. Yeah. <laughs> right there. And another one of those Batocero Tino Fours. You can see the sea lip beating with all those wonderful color colors. I'm rotating up. Only that. a few more seconds before he's gone. And that's it. Yep. And this really makes me think that uh, doing identification taxonomy on these. Right, I'm going to push ahead real quick, resetting, on these stand by. Must be really, really challenging. I mean, with all of these gelatinous parts, they need to be properly preserved. They must be super fragile to work with. So I'll never complain about doing taxonomy on sponges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess that's what makes these high quality okay, video and back imagery out. is so important yeah. for the identification. Most definitely. Slowing down. All right, I'm good to go. And even just the collection of these must be so difficult. I mean, if we're not doing it with an ROV, I would imagine that uh, all other methods will be very destructive and 
very difficult to, to get a good view of the overall morphology. Absolutely. Looking good there, Pat. Nice go, Pat. Let's do it. Is that a polykit? That looks like He's going down pretty quick. It does look like one. I'd say just a few seconds yeah. was gone. Oh. And yep, yeah. Adrianier in, in the chat is commenting that most of the samples in the past that were collected from troll nets would really destroy all of this gelatinous fauna. So I can imagine that uh, a lot of the early descriptions um, may have been done under very ch with with organisms with, you know, partially destroyed, or so that must have been very challenging. But that also, I mean, gives way to a lot of new species being described now as we get better samples in, in, in good condition and we get actually also all of these images yeah and Alan stated just above that even if you do get a good sample they're almost impossible to preserve well so you better make your observations quickly yeah See, is this anything? Center? Not really, huh? Yeah, copy income wide. Oh, look at that. Just all synchronized, actually, that beating of those CDR is quite astounding. Rotating up just a few more seconds before he's gone. Bottom of my screen. And yep, we'll let him go. Nice. Alright, I'm gonna take a second, push ahead and reset, stand by. It's a nice shot. Yeah, nice work video. Stretch back out, slowing down. All right, ready to start.
Yeah, and Alan is commenting here on the ch in the chat that there is a lot of hidden diversity in this genus Bathocero, but that this, uh, the one that we've been uh, seeing so far is reasonably close to the type locality for Bathocero fosteri. And that's my tilt, it's gone. Nice work. So pilots, we're coming up on our 10 minute before we change. So about 10 minutes. Copy that, Neff. Yep. Let's go for it. 10 more minutes? Yes. Copy. At 14.54 will be our ending. So watch lead map. He's underneath us. Watch lead now. Right there. Lucas. Bottom screen. Copy that. All right, I'm gonna take a second, push forward, reset, stand by. I'm watching Tether and the uh, Titan when we get closer. How's it look? Looks good. Good. Uh, the delta's just about perfect. Nice. I expect nothing less. Good work. All right, I'm stretched back out. It's looking pretty good. I'm ready to start. Okay, and so for those uh, following us, following us from shore, uh, we are now 10 minutes from the end of this uh, transect here, um, and then we will be ascending to our next transect, which will be at 900 meters depth. It's a cool one, huh? Oh, and we have here a beautiful jellyfish in the view ah, now. Ah, tilt's maxed out. Ooh. Darn. Yeah, oh, there it goes. Oh, it's very fast. So pilots, when we come to the end of this, we'll want to stop the move, correct? Um, As you ascend. I guess we could, yeah, we could stop it in between, and then we have a fresh starting point for the next okay. level. Uh, that makes sense. I'm just asking, you know, where, where, where would y'all be comfortable? So You just hold, yeah, hold station. Okay. We'll set back up and then go from there. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. Sounds good. Sweet. Yeah, so we'll easy stop the ship and then you'll just back under me and push out, turn around, push out. Is yeah. That correct? Yeah. Yeah. So it seems that the jellyfish that just flowed by very quickly. Our, um, uh, just as a heads up, our next one will be at 900. We're being told here by Alan. Yes. Thanks, Alan.
And I reckon from another comment in the chat that this was probably described actually by Alan, as it's being referred to as an Alan animal. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, again, one of what seems to be one of those battles, serial Dino Force. I wonder if there are many different species in the region or if they just seem slightly different, but they're all conspecific. Let's move in. There it goes. Slide on the screen, pilot. Copy that. I'll push forward after the end. That's tilt. Very gracious. All right, let him go. Use well. All right. I'm going to center up and push forward. Stand by. Resetting. Alright, slow him down, stretch back out. Good to start again. And heads up about five minutes. Copy that, five Copy minutes. Now. Five minutes to the end of this transect here. That's 1,200 meters. And then we will ascend to the next transect. I'm tilting down pretty quick just a little bit longer before it's out of reach. And that's max tilt. He's out. Next tilt. Yep. You said, are we ending at 54? Correct. Copy yes. that. You can go ahead. You can put an easy stop now, then. Okay, that's what um, I was about to ask you. So. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Bridge just a snap. Yes, could we just come to an easy stop and hold here? Thank you. Right there. Another Tina four. He's swimming. <laughs> it's 
shouldn't be difficult and to even yep, yes, it's difficult to, to zoom and focus <laughs> onto it. <laughs> it doesn't help that they're <laughs> mostly transparent in the yeah, water. Exactly. <laughs> Bridge and a half, go ahead. I think it's good at this time. You guys go for that. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, Bridge, yes, it'd be a good time. Thank you. And we are stopped. Got that. Is this about, sorry, can you ask if it's about A-frame? Would be great to have yes, time she time. did. She, did. she okay. confirmed it. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. To, uh, to yeah. examine under the microscope, actually. I wonder yeah, how much she, uh, life she we usually confirms. So yeah, obviously yeah. there is a lot here. Yeah, it's an interesting thought. Because you almost... You don't think so much about life, like microscopic life, yeah. being out of the sun, you know, without getting the photosynthetic organisms in there. Exactly. But there's so much else there's down here. That just uh, no. It looks like a siphonophore. So it it, yeah, it, it does look look like that uh, calicophore and siphonophore okay. we've oh. seen earlier on this dive. I think that is probably the same. It's very interesting how it just pulls and himself through uh, the water the and after you get with those tentacles after this? Yes. trailing after that. behind them. And that's out of. Yeah, I think yep. it is the same. All right. All right. Uh, mm, well, no. Yep, sounds good. You want me to come up and watch lead now? Follow you down as you get under me? Oh, Mike is here saying it's a yeah. rocket ship, so I found no for it. Send her back up. <laughs> Roger that. You can go yeah. ahead and uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I'm going to start coming up. Watch lead nav. Are we ascending an oblique config or a tow config? Oh, I'm sorry, I should have specified. Uh, like five meters come up, and I'll spin. We'll get Roger the toe. Copy, copy. Yeah. Coming up. Let's slowly start backing. Uh, Bringing camera down. And watch, it. That's, uh, we just ended the transect, so we're yeah. going to set up and head up to the next one. Okay. Thank you. Got that. And again, pilots, it's 900 meters for the next one. So copy that. Thank copy. That's about a delta of 20. Copy that. So we've just handed now our transect here at uh, 1,200 meters depth. So we will now be ascending to 900 I'm gonna meters depth and start clockwise another 45 starboard. minute transect. Roger that. <laughs> Looking down almost down. 90 degrees. Okay, I'm going to start to spin. Copy. We got you in Titan. Yeah, is it possible to brighten up Sirius Cam just a hair? Just trying to look at that tether, make sure it goes over top. I can see it going over the light pool there. Okay, that looks good. Alright, looks good. Yep. Alright, I'm gonna start pushing frack. Copy that. Looking backwards. That's as far as Sirius can go, and I'll follow you with Titan. Sounds good. Okay, I'm going to come up just a couple meters as I push forward. Copy that. Delta 15, looking good. Good visual in F. My F cam to you. Yep. Still pushing forward and coming up. Copy. Delta 10, I'm going to hold that for a little bit. Keep pushing forward. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna come up a little bit more. We have a good view of the full tether in our tail cams, yeah. Yep. Yep, no worries, thank you. All right, that's looking pretty good. Yep, see you on my aft cam as well. And I think ready right. to send when, when you are. Tight. Yeah, at this time, do you want to come out of auto heading? Auto heading disengaged. Same with me. Auto headings are out. Let's see. I need just my Z bias. We're coming up. Stand by as I get it ready. Copy. Joy lock in, doing 30 ahead, keep it straight. Okay, you ready to start coming up? Ready to send. All right, auto depth is out, the Z bias is in, I'm starting to come up. Copy that, ramping up. Building and to 30 meters per minute. And just as an update, ship is stopped, but still in a heading change. So Understood. Copy, Copy that. that. Six looking good. Roger that. We are at 30 meters per minute on the winch. Copy that. And I believe our transit up on this is about, what, 24 minutes? Is that right, Nav? Um, remember. Yes. It's, I was coming up with 24, 25. Copy I mean, that. Oh, I just saw a flicker. Uh, it was port. D2 port uh, aft pole. Really? Bridge and aft, go ahead. In the aft camera. Can you note that? Ah, thank you. Port aft pole? Port aft pole. It's the one I could see in the aft camera, so it's got to be the one pointed back. D2 port aft pole. Yeah, pointed back. So for the folks in the chat, we will now be transiting up in the water column for an approximate 20 to 25 minutes. And so pilots, the uh, heading change is complete, so we're stable. Copy that. We're not moving. Understood. Thank you, Nav. That's good to note. Yeah, we shouldn't be seeing any flicker at this point. Yeah, I haven't seen one in a long time. Uh, let's see, aft poles, they're not high at all. They're only at like 50%. Mm -hmm. I did notice the fan two speed keeps ramping up really high. I don't know. Is that something we typically see? Oh, the 750,000 mm -hmm. RPM? Yeah, it's a glitch. Okay, that might be. It's uh. Our fans are just so efficient. We can <laughs> All right, Delta 8-9, just increase C bias coming up. Roger right that. Do an 80 up, looking good.
going at 900 meters, about halfway there. Nine hundred, you said, is the next transect. Yes, correct. Okay, nine hundred. So, yeah, I'll stop at nine hundred. Um, you can stop at like eight. Right. Yes, yeah, eight fifteen, or not eight fifteen, eight eighty five, mm. and then uh, I'll start to back up. And as that when I start, you can come up to like eight eighty, and we'll get like a nice twenty meter delta and just reverse what we just did. Roger that. Sound good. Sounds good. That time I was estimating, Mark, I think was actually for the earlier uh, rise from 1900 to 12. Yeah, so this was a much quicker oh. rise. I think uh, we're, only well, we're only going up 300 meters, is that right? Yes, correct. Yeah. I'd actually, I'd estimated setup time and oh, okay. all I, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, gave you, I gave you about five minutes in Perfect. each one. So. And y'all actually did it much quicker, so... Nice. I see. I know. Nothing to stow. So. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it pretty speedy. Yeah, the actual lift time is about 10 minutes. Copy that. So. Let's see, just past 1030 depth, meters coming up. Delta 7 looking good. Vehicles rotating a little counterclockwise. Looking good. Hey, Nav Copilot, I was just about to ask you about that. Um, we had some... Hey, Nav Copilot. Yes. Were they asking about which transects we're going to 
No, so I was, I'll give you a quick update. There's a additional transect that they would like to do after all the planned ones, if it's possible for, you know, if time's available. Right now, you know, time-wise, it's not looking like it. Mm -hmm. um, oh. I don't know if something will change as we, you know, as we go along. Yeah, I don't know if Fernando related to you. I was the first nav. Um, we sacrificed... Um, a bit of time doing some troubleshooting this morning. Yes. And so we had yeah. seven transects we were hopefully going to get to today, but we, it was yeah. more likely that we were only going to be able to do six whenever I got up from NAV. And that's what it still looks like. Okay. So they're wondering if we can squeeze a little bit of a one. seventh one back in. Yeah. Yeah. Which was possible if we uh, yeah. were efficient in our setups and whatnot, but it probably wouldn't be a full transect. Yeah, I was I was going through it, and, and it looked to me like you're going to lose the last one anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, it just okay, depends we'll on how quick the setup Slow, are. approaching 900 meters. Roger that. Slowing on winch. Coming out. And I'm going to auto depth right now. I'll come to stop at 885. Copy that. And then at this time, uh, can you put in auto heading? Auto heading engaged. Auto headings in. A little bit of Z bias in. So we can also do a little bit of Z bias. Uh, so when you pop out of auto depth, if you have your Z bias in already, mm -hmm. you should like, won't necessarily float. Um, 885. 885 looks good. All right. Coming out of joy lock, I'm going to start to back now, and then as we see the tether start to loosen up, you can uh, come up another five meters and we'll get that delta 20. Yep, copy that. And you can start that now. Copy that. I think it's looking good. Coming up slow. And I'll look fully back. Sounds good. And then to be consistent, I'll just uh, turn one. to port. Copy that. We'll just keep doing that. I have uh, eyes on you and Titan. Uh, we just got a request to put the Knudsen on to uh, feed three. All right. Yes. Holding at about eight eighty. Thank you. Delta twenty. There you are in my main. Okay, thank you, folks. So if you are just joining us here, we are currently exploring the midwater environments uh, yeah, in I think the just Azores Plateau. Uh, and currently not too far away from some of the Azores Islands, but diving over Kay. an area that has uh, quite and a bit of open rotate. sea floor. And we are exploring the least explored Roger dive that. on Earth, Bringing which is the midwater. camera down to 90. So we are about Tether to set up good. and yep. start our 900 meter transect. This is a series of transects that we are conducting through the, the water column throughout the day. And as you push out, I'll and honestly, come down on it safe. I think this is a pretty Sounds exciting good. thing because you get a chance Pushing to forward. see Copy that. Bringing what camera up to follow. Like aliens. Some of the strangest things we ever seen in the deep sea are in the water column. So it's a very exciting Hang out time. very slowly as you move forward. Copy that. The water column is also the largest biome on Earth and the least explored. So this is a really great way for us to make contributions to exploring our largely Nav, unknown ocean. Do we yes. by are we to fire a Niskin in with this stuff? Uh, let me check on that. Camera's almost at Watch 4 lead 5. Nav. Copy that. That is about 4 or 5 right there, pilot. Yeah. Are Let's we go. supposed to do a Niskin at Stretch each level? Bit. Coming down a little more. Okay, roger that. Just wanted to check. Uh, let's see. We're going to find out about the Niskin. Understood. Uh, we're still setting up, so 
Just okay. some time. Camera angle four five degrees, and uh, yeah, Watch Delta about ahead. fifteen here. Cut that. Looking good. I'm just gonna go off stick for a little bit besides auto depth. See what uh, where D two floats, and we'll Copy find that. a good direction. There. Watch it. Go ahead. Receive. Thank you. Okay, pilots. They would like a Niskin at this level. Roger that. When we you're ready. Take care of that. Uh, you ready to do that pilot while you're gauging the current here? Is that okay? Yeah. Sounds good. Copy that. Enabling HPU. Valve packs enabled. Resetting Niskin. Uh, are all stations ready? Nav ready to drop sample? Ready to drop. All right. And video clipper good. All right. On my mark. Counting down from three. Three, two, one. Mark. Niskin fired. Uh, stand by one. Hydraulic secure. Current looking. Not much of one. So looking like three five zero. Mm -hmm. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll do like a decimal one move at three five zero. Just to yeah, get things going. Um, I think that's a good starting point. Yeah, it does look like you're drifting ever so slowly towards me. Watch the go ahead to snap. That is correct. All right, do you want yes, to uh, get your center up? All right, I'll get back to your center screen. Roger that. And then, yeah, Nav, can we okay. do a... You want to get a move in? Yeah, nice long move. Um, okay. 350 at decimal one. Okay. Um, I will get it now. Sounds good. Thank you much. Rage, Nav. Uh, yes, we'd like to get a move in. Um, stand by, I want, I want to confirm. What was the bearing again? 350 at decimal 350, one. okay. Sorry, I wrote it down. Uh, bridge, nav. Yeah, apologies on that. We'd like to get a move in at um, just at 500 meters. We'll do that again at a bearing of 350 at a speed of zero decimal one knot. Roger that, thank you. Okay, pilot, some moves in. Copy that. Thank you, Nick. And we'll mark it as the start of the transect now. Sounds good. Keep it ready. Make it easy for timing. It'll be at 1600 will be the end. Copy that. Copy that, 1600. All right, watch leads. Uh, we just started the next transect, so same thing. So we will be on each of our transects here today uh, for approximately 45 minutes, and we have just started our 900-meter yeah. transect. Go ahead, now. My calculation was dead on. 20 minutes to get up here and set up. <laughs> How about that? Good copy. And for Good work. And for our shoreside team that is joining us, please hey, you're doing all the heavy lifting. On the telecom. It does help us relay your requests to the pilots for anything to zoom in on or if we have anything that we'd like to sample. D2, our remotely operated vehicle, is uh, outfit with a five-chamber suction sampler. And I would love for the pilots, if they are interested in chatting with us about that, how we sample the water column, that would be great. But let me see if that's a good time for them. Pilot? Hey, watch it. <laughs> uh, sure, uh, talk on OKX. Hi, this is Sean Kennison, sitting uh, pilot. 
currently from GFOE. Uh, we can do a quick uh, round of introductions. Uh, to my left, sitting at the navigator, is Mark Durbin. Then to my right, John Mefford. Then further right, Brian Doros in video. And then we have in the back, and we're all from uh, GFOE, Global Foundation for Ocean Exploration. Our team of uh, engineers, videographers, um, yeah, just a big group of uh, various professionals. And uh, we're operating the vehicles today and doing all the uh, video products. Um, and then D2, which is the main ROV uh, of this two-body system, D2 and Sirius. Um, on D2, towards the front, we have a suction sampler, custom-made in-house. Um, with various canisters so we can separate and isolate um, different samples throughout dyes if we need it. And then uh, this allows us um, to, uh, one example um, that we use it is in for midwater as we are now. Um, we can try to capture different uh, floating items in the water column. Um, and how we do that is essentially we just drawer out slightly towards the front. It's on a, the nozzle is on a drawer mechanism, so it extends forward away from the vehicle, um, exposing the nozzle a little more. And then, uh, yeah, we just kind of manually drive and uh, try to capture different items floating. Um, so yeah, that's how we use the suction sampler in uh, midwater dives. So one thing that kind of gets overlooked here with midwater exploration is that it's pretty hard on the pilots. They have very little frame of reference. Ooh, pilot. Could we zoom in? There you go. Good for I think fish. that's another one of those uh, polygons before. Nope, it's fish, cyclothonies. Okay, thank you. All right, he's uh, getting up there. Let him go. Yeah, we go for him. You may want to push out when you're done with this one, Sean. Yeah, copy that. And he's, that's max tilt. All right, I'm going to reset and push forward real quick. Stand by. So on some midwater dives in the past, I've heard our um, shore side. And just want to note our uh, uh, LED bottle temperatures at 38. It was at 36 on the previous transect. Uh, we're getting warmer. Can you? Push the mains to 95. Copy that. Kind of makes sense, down. given that. Yeah. Uh, you want the uppers? And yeah, lowers. those those first three. Just to have one yeah. of the most common vertebrates on there. I don't want yeah, to. And have that was discussed a little bit in the chat. I think that. the number that was dropped was in the quadrillions, which is All right, something I'm that you can't even down. really fathom. And we're going to start again. That is a lot. Roger that. Is that there? See that video? Always moving, huh? All right, we'll let him go. Is that the one? Could we zoom in on that as you get closer? Thank you. He's going up quick. Mm. Yeah, let him go. He's centering. It's always amazing to see how small some of these organisms are and how, what we're able to see uh, when we zoom in. And you zoom all the way out and you're like, whoa, that was, that was tiny compared to what I was thinking. Yeah, and with the absence have, of any reference down easy here, scale is almost impossible. Just a little impossible. quick. Yeah. Roger that. We can do that. Right there. Braids nav. What is that? Hopefully our shoreside science team will tune in. Yeah, I'm at a loss. Oh, is it another? Uh, is it yeah, a it's another Tina 4. Whoa. Copy that it did not look like that <laughs> from our first perspective. Wow. OK. 
top this is if you far more out. colorful than some of the other ones we were seeing. Got good view on you and Titan. So we have a identification um, from. So you guys are, are co correct. Go ahead, Adrian. Sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. You as well. Um, I was just saying you're correct. Just a yeah, few no, more I was saying seconds. You're correct. It is a Tina 4. It's another Bathurst Iroi, but it's a yellow one. Yeah. So you want me to come up, Sean? Or just down at depth. Yeah, you can rotate down this a little. This one is 60. yellow in color, but you can still yeah, see that I'm gonna leave um, it red up just a little stomach bit. in the interior. All right, recentering and pushing forward. And like forward. Mike said before, they're, they're known as blood belly. Yeah, you just do video of Kapoor. Thanks for keeping me honest there. So I'm sure you guys mentioned this before, forward, but we by. might have a couple new viewers with us out there. Definitely so worth a shot there. Can you there. explain, Adrian, why yeah, that was, we just did that that was perfect. have Copy. something with a bright red color like that? All right, looking back at 45. Copy that. Yeah, that's a great question, Casey. So um, okay, red pilots, or it does clear look like ship stop. makes it Copy difficult that. for Make predators to What do you want to try for the next move? So with the red I might just light, leave it. it. Okay. We were doing decimal Very one, and it just seemed water, a little. So things that are red in color like will actually too appear quick. black, um, so they're not so able to be seen as well. Um, and uh, the, the reason static. why actually the stomach yeah, is red like is many movement. of the organisms that the Singapore eats can produce light or a better that. And so this red stomach actually will prevent um, organisms seeing that light in their stomach. If they eat something video. that makes light, um, this red color Three will clock. actually block that Ooh, from being. Great, thank you. Let's go for this one. Oh, and Mike Vecchione is saying that just off uh, in the distance there, we might have seen a potential cookie cutter shark. I don't know that I've ever seen a cookie cutter shark. <laughs> but the term cookie in the name makes makes me intrigued. It does look like yeah, on I'm the ADCB interested. that you could right, have video. about a decimal one. Right, here's another one Sorry. of those cyclophonies. Movie center. Um, Casey, can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So, so that pilot, according to ADCB, so that looks like you have about a one or some other type one, of current. bioluminescent shark, um, so. the lantern shark of some type. Uh, yeah. But cookie cutter sharks are super cool. They um, they are known for feeding on like large marine mammals. So they'll go up and they'll kind of swim up to them. Um, their lower jaw has this ridge of shark I'm teeth, so they'll quick. actually kind of <laughs> bust them onto the shark yep, and then spin goes. around in a circle All and right. take like a little plug of flesh out um, that leaves a perfect circle. That's how they get their new cookie. Ah, very cool. I didn't know that. Thanks for sharing. Right there. Let's do it. I find watching the jellyfish so peaceful. Oh, I get lost in it. So we have another organism here with sort of a, what you could say is a red internal cavity, which is also probably doing something similar to what Adrian was just talking about a moment ago. And he's going wow. up and I'm about out of tilt. That's it. Nice job, video. And nice if you job. look at these organisms, particularly the gelatinous ones, right, I'm gonna push ones, forward real quick and reset, stand by. How fragile and delicate they look and really get an appreciation for why exploring the water column like this where you can see them in their natural environment and you can see them before they're brought up in jars or in a net can be so important because each of those little pieces could crumble with, if just touched with a net. So these types of observations where you get a chance to get great imagery of them before they're um, brought up in a net or something could certainly provide very interesting information. Okay. As for all animals Stretch that we see on these RBRs, in situ observations are super important to understanding uh, how these organisms live their day-to-day -day life. Yeah, and in the chat, we've had a bunch of discussions about collection and preservation methods. And even with how carefully we're able to collect and bring things up to the surface, kind of in the same pressure as they're used to there, just in preserving them, it's almost impossible to, LED temp to keep everything as is. So yeah, this in situ high, vid Copy high quality videos 
critical. The pilots, y'all are good with where we are right now? I think so, Sips. yeah. A couple years Sips ago, we collected a it's jellyfish just north of the okay. Mediterranean Sea Mounts. I'm going to talk with Watch Lead on a couple and of the updates. And by the time, that, after so. about a day later or so, after it had been in its fixative for about 24 hours, maybe 48, it was white and crystal clear. All the color had leached out of it. And if you had just seen it from a museum specimen, you may never have known that it was red. Yeah, which makes you wonder about some of the things that were described long ago and haven't been seen since. Like, are we looking at the same thing when we see it in video, or is it something completely different? Absolutely. Just look at what we've learned about dinosaurs and some of our initial interpretations about dinosaurs that we've learned over time that maybe wasn't quite right as we learned a little bit more about them as more fossils have been uncovered. So it stands to... It's probably possible that, that it? a lot of the rest of uh, <laughs> what we know from the fossil record, we might still have some things to learn. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. I'm about to max out tilt. And that's it. Go ahead, Matt. See this? Oh, uh, was I going to throw one? <laughs> yep. All right. That's my tilt. I love this one. They look so fancy. Yeah. I always think how it's kind of interesting how you see things that are familiar but very different from some of the, the more common species that we're used to seeing on our plates. <laughs> so that was identified by Mike Eckeon as a suggested shrimp. Yeah, look at that, huh? Oh, look at how dark this one is. Mm -hmm. So I'm tilting all the way up. Yep, that's max tilt. Yeah. All right. And... Any idea from folks what that Sinking. one was? Looks different than some of the other ones we've been seeing. Or maybe it was just in our shadow. I'll push forward right over this copot. Copy that. I can come up a little. Tilt down. Yeah, that's good. All right, video, let's let him go. Yeah. All right, I'm going to push forward and reset. Stand by. Looking down 60 degrees. Copy that. Yeah, Mike said it might have been a bristle mouth, um, no, but no, it was different. Um, so it's not, so we've been seeing a lot of cyclophony or the bristle mouth earlier, which are the most Spec abundant fish, um, vertebrate on the planet, but this one actually looks Hang different. So we're bit. still trying to stretch them out, um, figure out what it is in the chat. To stabilize. So stay tuned. Okay, great. Thanks. That looks pretty good there. Well, stand by. Okay, all set, ready to go again. Is that it? Copy. All right, let him go. Yeah, right there. Go for it. Oh, wow. Look at this one. Look at how bright that red is. The pattern on the... He's going up. Down. It almost looks like a spaceship. It does very much look like a spaceship. And that's max tilt. He's gone. Uh, so, pilot, this yeah. is uh, Watchley. Hey, Watchley. 
Okay, so we have a request from Shore that if we see another one like that, to please collect it. Um, jelly? Yep, one of that jelly with the little pointy cone. So if you see another one, we would love it. Understood. We'll keep eyes out. Thank you very much. Yep. So for our Shore Center, side, is that anything video? team, uh, we have filed a request with the pilots for collection. Copy. It's a really delicate dance while in the midwater so because by the time we actually see something, decide to sample it, Frequently it's gone, so we kind of have to anticipate what we're going to want to see. Hard to bring out, what huh? We're going to want to collect a little <laughs> bit early. It's a little bit more different than on the benthic exploration front. He's going up. I think he's exiting light pool, we advised. All right, we'll let him go. Okay, resetting heading. Oh, sorry, I was spinning when he went by. I wasn't going to get him. Yeah, let's do it. I'll start in bottom. Ooh, this is another siphonophore. And this one looks different from some of the other ones that we were seeing earlier. Yeah. So frequently on Siphonophores, you'll see a um, sort of trail of what kind of what it appears to be are these little red I'm tilting red up. behind it. Might be really close. Yeah, sounds good. Well, sometimes you can get these really amazing shots of the whole trail mm -hmm. back behind them. All right, need to recenter. Stand by. I'm gonna reset. Good. I think I might have just, oh, it's quick, huh? All right. There's shrimp. Sure. Let's do it. Swimming up. I'm about done with rotate. That's max rotate. He's out. Nice. Hey, watch it. Yep. Cylindrical or urn shape, you got it. Right. 
Sounds good. Iron shaped. We'll have to keep an eye out for that. Is that like a, a vase? Yeah. Yeah, kind of like a tulip shaping. That's what I'm assuming. See this coming in center? Oh yeah. I've seen these before too, and I always like seeing them. They look like a fire firework. So we have an idea from our store team. So looks like we've got some. Oh, there it goes. All right, Malumka, about and 90 degrees on. area. Um, so we'll we have heading. some Stand by. Uh, thoughts that it might be a foram or foraminifera. This is another one, though, that we might know some information from the fossil record. Sometimes you see them, they look like these tiny little shells in uh, sand or in uh, fossil records. But would you know from the fossil record how all those delicate parts that we just saw there, that it would have looked like that? And if you think about the different sizes of things throughout evolutionary history, who knows how large they could have been in some of the earlier ocean conditions. Say that again, video. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's been quite a few today. It's been nice. So for those looking for some spatial reference as to where we are, uh, we're at about 1,200 meters, or 900 now. Yeah, sorry, I'm even getting lost. We're, <laughs> we're at 900 meters depth, um, and we're about 35 nautical miles northwest of San Miguel Island in the Azores. Um, we're about 15 nautical miles-ish south of our first dive site for those who, who watch that, but we're exploring an entirely different environment here. And it's been kind of interesting how the three of our dives have been very different focused. And I mean, this one we expected to be different, but the first one we were tagging as a biological dive and it was our geologist on board was having a field day. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen someone so excited about rocks. Um, so it's always interesting how we make these plans and pot? we think like, oh, we're doing this because we're going to see water? this. And then when we see something totally different, it kind of validates our whole 
method of exploration. It's it's why we check this out to see if we're if we see something in as a primarily a mapper, if we see something in the bathymetry, then we assume like, oh, if we see that, we should associate these species with it or um, this type of habitat. This type of habitat, which is also applicable to the water it's column. Exactly. So if we're in these depths, like we'd expect to see these things. And while we have seen certain species dominating different it's areas, um, it's always interesting when you see something that doesn't belong. I completely agree. I think my favorite moment is every day when we're on the line and folks are just kind of stumped. Mm -hmm. And right, don't really know what it is that we're yep. looking at. He's gone. It is honestly the best because then you realize that there's some value to the work that we're doing because no one has seen this before. It's, it, it seems out of place. But we've had so little exploration of the deep sea that even though we feel like we've done a lot, even just within this program, we've done quite a See bit. This, but uh, it's still such a fraction of the amount of ocean that's out there, and there's still so much left to be explored. We really have only scratched the surface. Absolutely. And one of my favorite things is seeing these hardened scientists who've seen it all come out and have yeah, that like childlike awe down, that brought them into science <laughs> yep. after seeing uh, something. I agree. It is really unique the way exploration plays out. It's really just kind of answering those fundamental questions of what's there and what is that? Because in so many places, we just don't have enough eyes in the, on the seafloor in order to answer those questions yet. I hope I never stop asking that question. See that? Is that anything? Oh, it's the same, uh, yeah. Is that another one of those foraminiferans? I think so. Foraminiferans. Wow. Foraminiferans. Yep, we have confirmation from shore. It's going, That's uh, full ghost. Looking back in the, the chat a little bit, something that we missed, uh, that fish that we saw earlier. Oh, there's a fish. We'll go for that. Uh, it looks like it may have been a type of whale fish. Is that the all black The fish? all black one that thought was the thing that's extremely common actually is something that's pretty uncommon. Very cool. Come on, buddy. I don't know that I've ever seen a whale fish. And I know that I haven't. Well, All right, we'll let him now. go. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, not today, he said. This is Lexi. Shelly. How much longer do we have on this channel? Little guy? Alright. Yeah, And he's going down. So that's 14 yep. minutes. Hold him go. Happy, thank you. So we have about 14 more minutes on that. That was behind me. Here at 900 meters. Unfortunately, that's, that's where all the cool stuff is, right? 700 meters, then 600, then 500 for the rest of yeah. our lives.
go for it. Looks like that might be another trick on a four off in the distance. Alan Collins is saying that that one looks like another um, Cali Cochran. So you come at center? Which is a type of Siphonophore. See that coming center? So sometimes in the water column we see um, sort of like mucus houses that are left over from various animals. Yeah, so he's going of, up. Yeah, he's the, out. Let's leave him. It kind of looks like it's just kind of a... Uh, hey, pilots, this blob, is 10 minute warning. But they are frequently... Copy that. Thank you. Uh, Thank formerly you. Formerly mucus yes. houses that some animal has lived in at one point in time. Or maybe used it to trap some food. Let's see this guy here. All these here. little white dots that you see are likely food for someone in the water column. I'll say I've, I've lived in a lot of interesting places when I was younger and in college. I don't think I've ever lived in a mucus house. <laughs> maybe one of the animals you bring up tonight can build you one you can stand back tonight. I never said that I was missing that. <laughs> But oh. who knows? <laughs> and let him go. Oh, there it goes. All right, stand by. I'm gonna reset real quick. Push him forward. So we've we've talked a little bit of how easy it is for us to get lost in in the blue and kind of as we start tracking things, how they're we get such good zooms on something and forget how small it is. But imagine if you're a pilot and you're having to basically track the positions of the two vehicles and the position of the ship and stay all keep all of that forward moving and land tracking and moving throughout watching these um these animals and trying to get good zooms on them and collect them. Okay, switch back it's out, really ready to go. Impressive dance. Yeah, we're looking at a, a stabilized vision forward at like basically the same depth at all times and just all of the, the systems that go into that, all of the technical expertise of our pilots and navigators and, and the whole team, it's one of the more impressive things to see. I completely agree. So lots of the uh, the food particles that we were just talking about will sometimes make their way. Um, they'll get eaten up by a lot of the things in the water column, but a lot of them will also make their way down eventually to the seafloor, where the benthic animals that live there, a lot of the ones that I certainly love seeing, like the corals and sponges, this it becomes their food. And it travels all the way down to the surface of the uh, seafloor. And they're able then to basically filter out that and you guys can't see me, but I'm making sort of coral polyp movements with my hands <laughs> as I try and describe uh, how filter feeders eat. But uh, it's it's good to see that there's certainly food here for something. There's plenty of it. Right there. K 
executing that. Looks like it. Ooh. Have you seen orange ones before earlier today? I believe so. Cool. He's Very super cool. close. All right, let's let him go. So apparently we saw some of the orange ones a little deeper, like we were just saying. Yeah, let's set it up real quick. So a lot of the ones we've seen today have been clear. I love seeing colorful things in the deep sea because a lot of people think that because the deep sea is uh, really dark and deep and okay. it's far away, for so many people it's inaccessible. They think that it's kind of cold and, and barren, maybe not too much light down there, on the hunt. not colorful. And really, honestly, the opposite is true. Um, so many places that we go, there's so much color in the deep sea, and we bring some really powerful lights down and are able to see it, which is incredible. Yeah, there's a lot of pizzazz on these organisms. Agreed. Creative shapes. When I first sat down here this afternoon, I said, you know, see the real aliens here, here in the deep sea. I don't need space. I have the deep sea. Yeah. And we kind of even discussed earlier, even the same species, we've just seen them in different configurations, and you're like, what the heck is that? And then you get closer and see it move, and you're like, oh, oh, that's kind of the same thing that we were seeing before. So especially with these gelatinous creatures, it's it's wild to to see how many different forms they can take. Alan Collins is uh, suggesting that there are likely two different genera of heated mass that have that deep orange color. Thanks, Alan. And we just have another cyphonophore there for a moment. We've got approximately five more minutes left at our 900 meter transect. So pilots is a heads up, and I'll remind you when we get there, the next two transects will fire Niskin bottles. Sounds good. Roger that, Neff. Just a little heads up. Thank you, Neff. Got a little less than four minutes. Copy that. Four minutes. At the fifth minute, that's when we'll see everything. That's cool. <laughs> Undoubtedly. That is how it works. Literally the last minute you'll see the coolest thing. <laughs> right when it's time to go. Go for this video. I think that's another air one. Looks like it. I'm 
I don't know, he's getting, getting close. Stomach. He's small and close. Alright, we'll let him go. See that center? I'm not sure what that one is. Hmm. And he's getting a light pull. Mm. Yeah. Alright, that's it. Let him go. You guys are just about out of time. Final minute, minute here. Just about out of time here on this 900 meter transit for our full day midwater exploration. Ship is all stopped, so I think um, yes. when the end of this minute we can go ahead and start setting our up. Our next transect will be up at oh, maybe 700 for the meters. As we come that light that flickered. Mm -hmm. the Maybe it was today. the we started ox all the way light. Just above the sea floor at mm. meters. And you don't think and it was just the tether passing in front of it? We did a 900 meter Could transect, have been a 1200 meter transect, exhausted. and a 1900 <laughs> meter transect. And now we will head up to I 700 it. meters. Nicely done. That was the aft pole. Okay. Oxlant catched. So. We want to call this one ended. Yeah, that's it. All right. Okay. All right, well, actually, it's, uh, that's the end of this transect. We're going to set up and head up to 700 meters. Thank you very much, pilots. All right. Let's All right, see. start coming up a little bit. Sounds good. Okay, so we have completed this transect. And, uh, and yeah, I'll just start backing. Looking good. So as we do that, we, we can discuss the uh, light flicker more scene. after the dive. What it was about the midwater that inspired them. So I think these are kind of fun answers, so I'm going to share them. Looking down, so coming George up to 20 Hashimoto meters. From Mbari, it's still the so aft. The fact that there was so little known about wow. right the midwater. And that most, at almost every time we look around, it took me a while, but interesting. I certainly agree. I found my way back. All right, and then All right, 20 meter delta. Looking Kessler. good. Ted is off Ted nicely to the opposite side of and rotate. By all the predator prey dynamics. Down and a that little there bit are more. Crazy interactions in the water a lot of turbidity, example, but we can see the uh, tether pretty good here. Yeah. A video of a shrimp uh, let's see, I'll back a little bit more. Midwater fish while it was still alive. All right, I think I'll go ahead and action. turn now and we'll go in clockwise. I don't think there's many things. Yeah, 90. Most hardcore shrimp ever. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see the tether pretty good here. All right, and then yep. Alan yeah. Collins from the National Systematics Lab at NOAA says that that's where the midwater is where the most jellies are. Uh, and he says that there's also the joy of the hunt, so to speak, that really captures his imagination. Certainly agree. This is quite the place where right. your imagination is wild. up, push him back. Oh, yeah. Right, that, there are things down here that I couldn't Looking even back, begin to pull. imagine. That's and why a lot of science second. fiction is based off of some of these creatures. Yeah, it's they have video of Mike you'll see, Buzz. Uh, some of the midwater animals are like, yep, that definitely is a insert horror movie title here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Main character. And I mean, if they're a shrimp eating your stomach while you're alive, I don't, that's, that's, a, horror that's a horror movie. movie. That's a one. <laughs> yeah, I think it's well founded. Okay, uh, I'm gonna start so coming up. Marizano Copy. from Noah Ocean Experience says that she loves seeing the behaviors in videos. Still pushing uh, out and coming up. I can see myself in your aft cam. Looking good. In real life. So the midwater transects are an amazing way to learn more about the biology so that, that we can't really learn from net Delta specimens. 17. And we kind of were talking that before in and just their general my pathology as well. So Delta not 15, even their behavior, but what they look like. Still pushing and forward. Delta 12, 13. That's part of the surprise. 13. Where you're like, I have no idea what this was. And you're like, oh, that's what that was the whole time. I remember I have you in my aft cam yeah, as well. It's, it's pretty interesting. Uh, personally, I like midwater because I keep hoping I'll see a whale or a manta ray. Good. All right. A little deep Disengage for them. Disengage auto-heading on your mark. Fingers are crossed as we get shallower. I'm manifesting that for you, Casey. Thank you. All right. You can disengage auto-heading at this time. Off. So, Sam, what, out. what first got you interested in studying marine science? Um, 
surfing. Great start coming <laughs> up. <laughs> completely blunt with it. No, I, I, I grew up by the bus. ocean. I Roger couldn't that. tear Stand myself by. out of it See when I was younger. Joy locks in. And just was like, what? How do I do this forever? How this do should I be a stay pretty short ascent. in this forever? I loved it. I wanted to protect it. Yeah, I wanted to learn that. more about it. Ramping and to the point glass. where even when it came time Bridge for me to go to hit. high school, I went to a marine biology focused high school. I just always knew that that was the direction I wanted to go. And I think one of the good. coolest things about it is that sounds good. where Perfect. I am that now is We're probably ready. what I envisioned that Thank I had wanted to do when yeah. I was younger, but the path that I took is right. not the uh, one I would have thought. Ready? <laughs> I'm coming and out of auto depth now. I think now. that's just Z a really is in. interesting I'm coming up. part about our field is no matter what your interests are, there is a place somewhere. I can if you're if you want to get up to 30 ocean, meters per minute on um, the you can make that. it work and not all paths are as direct as I thought they were when I was looking at colleges and when I was graduating and when I was having I'm my existential more crises of my <laughs> <F -pole jokes. laughs> but it's uh, I think it's just wild how comprehensive this field is um, and it's always interesting learning about the different paths that people have gotten to get here and and just the, the people that you interact with. I agree. There certainly is no one, one straight No valid data on the winch school. standby. Like, you like this? You go Still to moving. This uh, you do this, you get this there we are. It's back. And I'd say I, so I had a fairly Did straight path where I first Did it reset? Like Did it go all the way back? I had a word for that. Looks like the time history like just disappeared. So what um, the winch was. was still moving. And then I wanted to go to school while it said that. Uh, while it displayed that school. message. But I spent all that time thinking I was going to sh but study shallow water. So yeah, no indication that. I wonder if it did it finish and it just reset. Yeah, it may have, yeah. Have you ever seen it? Doing deep sea work. That might have just resetting its graph. Yeah. Looks like it's graphing now, though, right? Yeah, it is. And okay. This is what I, I don't do now. think I've ever seen it roll and over I like that. With this sort of base exploration Let's that we were talking about before. Yeah. And so I'd say I have a, I yeah, have a straight path, and it's just fine. Path that I so all the <laughs> numbers were—it was just the error message that yeah, the yeah, it looked like it frequently. kind of froze there, I and I think it froze on the last displayed value. Wow, that reset itself. So that was just kind of. So Mike Becky says that he wanted someone to pay me to play with boats to go fishing and collect weird stuff. So uh, <laughs> Mike said that, you know, the squids uh, that you see in the pelagic mollusks lured me into the good. A little bit forward. Mike is uh, one of the world's Keep foremost straight. experts. straight, and we're going to 700 meters. He's always calling in and Roger telling that. us about yes. all the octopods right. and the um, squid that we see on the seafloor. We're in frequently, if we are lucky, in the water column. Ooh, there goes a couple of interesting things as we go through our transit. All right, let's see. Looks like another uh, pteropod or two plus a cyclonic Yeah, it's got to be that, right? Maybe it's yeah. the end. Of just uh, that's what it looked like. It was pretty full. Yeah, I agree. So it's really interesting the people the path, path that people take to get here. It was just caught my eye because everything kind of froze for a second when yeah. it displayed that. Sean, sure, this is video rolling. Hey, video. Your, oh, has gone. your task, should you want to accept it? Show me a whale. Many people that aren't or the Kraken. Too off, too off far <laughs> bottom for that. Whale, we'll see what we can do, video. Really set the tone for the next transect there. Well, you could tell him it's a expectations. Whale. It's all about expectations. Well, we'll get Kraken on that. Sorry, I had to do it. It's not bad, it's not bad. I think what's really interesting about All right. the ocean too is how there's life in Another couple of minutes. Multiple the speed like here. dimensions. Um, whereas, you know, there are very few organisms on land that so, yeah, we'll do the same thing. Life. Uh, I'll get to 700 yeah, and go to 685. Roger that. So I back and come up five meters. We'll do our dance and uh, go from there. Go, for part of go, the whale. go after those whales. Seeds yeah. Or, um, use it to pollinate certain plants, but nothing exclusively 100% lives in the air. Bridge nap, go ahead. Nothing else, no connection to land. 
But in the water column, Roger you that, have organisms you. that spend their That's entire perfect. The heading lives change is up complete. in the water column, and they never Drop see that. the sea surface. Have. We're going to go through um, the deep sea scattering layer here shortly, and as we are kind of beginning to approach it now, that is um, the migration that occurs with the deep sea scattering layer is actually the largest migration on Earth. And in many cases, those animals that live there will never see the surface of the um, of the seafloor, which is kind of mind-boggling. It's completely mind-boggling, and you you can actually make some fairly decent comparisons between the seafloor and terrestrial competition. A lot of it's either space-driven or resource-driven, and then in the water column, it's a little bit different because there's I won't say endless space, but relatively endless. And then some places are more resource abundant, yeah. but you, you don't have the same sort of deserts. You don't have the same sort of things. Um, it's a little bit more uniform. And so while you think of in a forest, you have the trees overgrowing and then the underbrush has to compete and everything needs to go out. And a lot of the places require fires for it to <laughs> to open up some space while here it's it's a little right, bit different so in 22 meters. I think that, Roger that. may lead to some of the different biodiversity that you have um, yeah. it's just interesting to think about why things live where <laughs> and the implications of it that has you want me to stop Hopefully at 690 or so days, right and then cheat up um, a few more meters back along the mid atlantic ridge once we have um, completed our work here on yeah, the you can be like uh, or 685 15 and meter delta okay. looking for to start there is hydrothermal that. vents and one of the things that's fascinating about hydrothermal vents is they're one of the only ecosystems in the world that doesn't rely at least at some level okay i'm gonna sunlight. start to slow Roger. and their resources actually start to disengage starts from the chemicals that are coming out of the hydrothermal vents those are chemosynthetic organisms versus photo or light um, organisms. Ph Auto depth is in at 700 meters. I'm sure we will talk lots and lots I'm and sure lots that's more about that but as a kind of a teaser um, I have for no folks. doubt. And then at this time, can you uh, put in right, auto heading? Auto heading engaged, meters. same with me. So, Easing yeah, on as winch. you set up here. Pilots will just get kind of in position. We right. take one I'm going to slowly start to back. I'll stop on which. Copy ready. that. Ready for that? Ready for backing. I'm backing. Auto head is in. Yes, Looking full back. I see you in Titan. 06 feet. Oh, W. 06 W. Okay. And in Come on back. Tether's good. Still good visual. Okay. Yeah, this time, do you want to start to come up to uh, five more meters? Yep, coming up slowly. Just about there. Roger that. It's a delta of about 20. Looking good. There you are. Tethers, let's see, right above me. All right. Uh, I'll just turn again to port. Stay consistent. Copy that. Keep backing just a little bit more. I'll bring my camera up to 90 degrees. There we are, looking straight down. Copy that. All right, I'm going to start my spin now. Copy. Tether looks good. 
Going right on top of me, looks great. Start to push forward. Copy that. Probably I gotta run and get my uh, headset from the room. And I'm paying out slightly. Sounds good. And pilots, uh, while you're setting up, just we'll do a Niskin fire when you're ready. Roger that. Niskin, you got it. Camera angle passing at 60 degrees. Copy that, 6 zero. And now at 45 degrees. Delta 15. Well, that's a big one there, huh? I'll get set up that's for Niskin. Boy. Sounds good. I'll uh, hunt for some uh, current direction. Copy that. Niskin reset. Nev, are we ready for a Niskin sample? I'm ready when you are. Roger that. Video's ready. Thumbs awesome. Up, Anna. We'll count you down on my mark, counting down from three, two, one, mark. Niskin fired. Hydraulics off. Got it. So I'm looking like three, four, zero right now. Okay. I'll turn to face you. So we have just collected our 700 meter EDNA sample. I think this actually looks pretty good. So if you've heard us talk about some flowing that, that way, some flowing that way. What do you think about uh, this? That is environmental it's looking DNA. good. And essentially, do you, uh, is the speed good for you? You think we'll just stay, stay put where we are? Kind of it might be okay. Uh, Let me center up real quick. Okay. can use to help us identify what other organisms are in the area that maybe we can't see, or maybe things are too small, or they've been in the area We're just going to start stationary then? we use those little fragments so, yeah. of DNA that okay. are left behind to help us determine sort of the general biodiversity in the area. eDNA is a relatively new uh, tool up. for scientists. It only really has been popped up here in the last it's looking really good. Is there a little cross current here? Uh, I just lateraled. Uh, that's why, yeah. It'll take a little bit to. Of course, it does kind of look like relative to you, huh? Just a little bit. It's come over. It's not much. A little bit. It might be shifting a tad. Rotating. Let's do 3.30 for a second. Okay. Let's check it out. 3.30, aye. And we are off on our 700 meter transect. I uh, haven't started quite yet. Oh, yeah, Still uh, yet. looking okay, for current direction. We are Stand almost by. off yeah. on almost. our 700 meter <laughs> transect. Almost there. <laughs> Have, uh, is there any specific so uh, target so of sampling? Uh, oh. Jelly. Oh. Jelly. And. Uh, so was it a tina four? That's right. Pear, pear, it was a cylinder or vase shaped. Yeah. Cylinder vase shape. Okay. All right. I think this is good. You happy with three thirty? That works for me. All right. I'm gonna stretch out real quick and uh, then we'll start. Stand by. Siphon the four center. Copy that. And south, actually. Now. All right, I'm stretched out, ready to start. Looks good. Center screen jelly, white. Come on, eh? All right, now I think uh, this marks the start of the new transect here. Okay, Roger that. Jelly. Watch it. Is this the jelly on our watch list? Your mic's not open. Your mic's not open. No, I don't think this is quite the one. We were looking for one. It's beautiful, but we were looking for one with a little more color to it. More color. Yeah, it was uh, kind of black and red on the outside, but boy, is that pretty. 
tilt down. And it's the same type of jellyfish. Right there. Just not quite that. Oh, another forearm back there. Yeah, my tilt's going up. Be advised, video. Okay. Everything's that light pool. Yeah. All right, and, let it go. And pilots, we have a confirmation from shore. That's not the jelly we are interested in, but thank you so much for checking. Yep, it was a you good got eye. it. That was... White stick, right? This is not the jelly you're looking for? I knew it was that high. Uh, <laughs> Tina 4 time. upper right. <laughs> Tina 4, you want to do this That's one? Top center. Uh, can we do up to the Tina 4? Yeah. Go to the top. Top. It doesn't look so cylindrical. Oh. Oh. Wow, look Maybe vase shape, but not really. There's a lot of vase shapes out there. There is a cones. pretty big variety of vases. Those are so cool. Oh, beautiful. Might need to... Uh, I'm rotating video be advised. More, more clarification on the type All of right. vase. That's nice over there. I can rotate to this guy. Oh, wow, He's going quick that. though. Ah, uh, let's let him go. Alright, uh, resetting. Tether's okay. Fish lower center. So we are kind of the 700 meter transector is at the edge of the deep sea scattering layer. And I certainly think we've already seen that. You might see why there might be such a large biomass Oof. signature okay, let him go. All right, let uh, go. in this area. Look how much we've already seen in the first. Maybe push out when you get a chance. Of yeah. the transect. Push out a little bit. Okay, so we've got some IDs on all those things we've just seen. We have an Atola. South we lower have center. A, uh, right there. Sedific yep. Its left side forward. is the head. And a Bathysarote. Oh, right away. Whoa. South. South. Wow. Oh, that's really cool. So, so that's a siphonophore. Mm -hmm. And you can see all the little bells at the front and all the like, all those things hanging down there are to, to catch their prey. You just kind of lay leave it out like a net and when things disturb it, they pull them back in and they're able to eat. Can't find the focus. Yeah. He might be pretty close. Yeah, he's about to go. Pull wide. Right yep. There's a Tina 4 center. Right there? Yep. So that was identified by Mike and Adrian. That might be the sun. one. Near the bottom of my screen, pilot. Copy that. Ooh. I can come up if needed. Ooh, is this another Tina 4? Looks like it. All right, bring the camera down and coming up slightly. Copy that. Video after this, I'm going to have to push forward. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. That's unreal looking. And he's up high. Like, wow. Can we collect this unreal. pilot? Uh, <laughs> not at this time. It's too late. Sorry, watch Okay. Yeah, if you All see right. another one, we'd like that one. Copy that. That's Thank what you. we're looking for. Sure. Push him forward, stand by, be setting. Sorry. Roger that. Good call on that. Yeah, he was, once it's above your brow, you're pretty far behind. Mm -hmm. All right, paying out back to 15, Delta, and 45 degree angle. Layer, Copy Ooh, that. that He's right here. <laughs> <laughs> Almost done resetting. Looking good. Okay. Good to go again. A couple more arrow lines off in the distance. Alp lower left, jelly lower right, whichever you want. This will start here. Tina 4. This one they just said they the wanted. Is like this it. the same one, yeah, Washington? Yeah. We, if you could zoom or get towards that for collection, I think that is close. Copy that. Do you want to send her? Yeah, start halfway. Confirm. Yes, we have please a yes, sample. please. <laughs> All right. Sure, Video, out. please halfway. come wide. How's that to start? Yep. Coming out of auto depth, watch me. Char lights on. Char 3 selected. Stand by rolling. So just making comment. Roger. You can just below. We there. have Char 3 selected. We need to go to Jar 4, is that correct? No. No, uh, Jar, Jar 3 is open. Okay, Roger. Yes. 1 and 2 are in use. Roger that. Now this is watching. Watch it, go ahead. 
Which uh, suction sampler will this be going into? Three. Thank you. Coming up. It, Roger that. Coming up with too you. close to. He's up high at this point. Coming up. Can you extend a little more? Roger that. and work. Hold that. That's great. Roger. What level of suction would you like to try? Start like a thousand. A thousand, Roger. Yeah. Standing by. All right, you can start suction. Suction enabled. Oh, got part of it. Part of it went in. And. That part's in. Okay. In the tube. I think it all went in. Um, Roger that. Standing by for confirmation. It's in the and jar. There we go. Jar. All right. Sealed. Going to jar four. I'm going to reset. Stand by. Roger. Nice work, Copilot. You too. Retracting drawer. Nice job. Okay. That was a hunt, huh? That was. All right. Let's see. We need to uh, come back down five meters. Yep, Roger. Follow your lead. Understood, I'll push out, come down five meters. Looking down five zero degrees, bang out. Looking four Bit five degrees. All come down, I'm gonna push forward a little more. Run into this RV was lost on the list. Probably. <laughs> 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 and we're back to a good delta. Copy that. Nice hunt. Yeah, you all did great. Go for that video. All right, uh, reset. Oh, there's another one. Upper left, let's get that good video of it. Let's do it. If we could get some good imaging on this, that would be great. Oh, how beautiful. Up, be Coming at you pretty quick, wow. too. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. I think we got a single frame. Copy that. He's up there now. Let him go. Lower center jelly. Lower center. Near the bottom. Is that the one? Yep. Sitting idle for you. So uh, George Masamoto is saying that those have are really long tentacles, and that he's not sure what the horns do in terms of the biomechanics. Wait, is this a jelly or is this something else? This is a oh. jelly. It didn't look like it when I asked. <laughs> <laughs> look at it go. Same, look same. Go. Uh, two of those. Uh, Tina Forest on the screen. Is there a snapper for? Is this the one? Yep. There's Thank one you know. there and there's one on the upper right. Oh, I lost him. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's nice and stable. I am looking down, so he's probably not with great lighting. Ooh, this is another one. Yes, this is another one of the horn ones. So since we do have that collection, Max pilot, we would be interested in getting some good footage um, just to make sure that they get good in situ footage of it for potential identifications if you are able. Yeah, copy that. Thank you. It's swimming up. Looking down a little. Tracking focus. Hanging out, or uh, pulling in rather. You're getting below me a little bit. Copy it's that. interesting how the tentacles seem to get Camera wider. Six, yeah. Just uh, yeah. 15, 15 more seconds video. Mm -hmm. Before I need to reset. Yeah. Let's get a full screen. That thing doesn't have pizzazz. <laughs> Looking down 70 degrees. It definitely has pizzazz. Seven zero, wow, copy look that. at how long that goes. Pilots, do you have the chance to put the lasers on that so we could see 
Lasers oh. are on. Let's see. I don't really see them now. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. I need to push forward. Yep. Stand by. Thank you, though. That was great footage. Stand by as I reset and push forward. Nice work. Yeah. Thanks for uh, tracking me. No worries. Well, apparently the tentacles look wider because they're contracted. Oh. Hang out. Big cell. Camera angle four five. There. Delta pretty good. It's okay, okay slowing down. A few seconds to use in forward motion. Left big jelly. Oh, we got it. Is it the one? Yep, just Still real quick. It. If you have a chance. Great, thank you. Wow. Oh, oh nice. Plenty of tether. Almost mm -hmm. at a tilt. That's my tilt. And he's above us. Let him go. Did you just wave goodbye at that? <laughs> I saw that too. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jelly <laughs> bottom right. Thanks, guys. No problem. <laughs> the, ent like you guys. the entire back row stops watching the video and starts watching Casey. How pretty. Coming up. So this is it seems to have many, many tentacles. I think up and close it video be buzzed. Yeah. The better to eat the food. Yeah. Let's see there. All right. Moving. Resetting. Camera tilt. Back to level. So ID on that one is likely a helicera. Another jelly center right. Let's do it. Right there? Yep. Oh, lost my focus. That's like another one. Yeah. yeah, I think so. So I think these are the groups of jellyfish that are um, to cut that to the purpose of put a little cone on top. And I'm sure I've got some folks on, on the chat room Cut that? Will probably provide some more content too, but... Some of the shapes of these jellyfish can be fairly diagnostic, and are pretty interesting. Hmm. You want to push out a little pilot, or? Um, yeah, copy that. All right, I'm going to reset real quick. Stand by. It's looking better. Good to go. Right hand side, lower right, tongue looking thing. Right there. Yep. Don't want to get a good video of this. Oh, what is that? Oh, there's another siphonophore. Oh. I need one more hand over here. Yeah, don't we all? Are huh? siphonophores colonial animals? Oh, it, Disappearing. No, I, I'm wrong. Yep, I think I'm, it is a self. He's high oh. close. Oh, right, let go. Are self colonial animals? Oh, there's two more of them. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right, resetting camera right tilt. There. All right, back to level. I will remind you that I You're am there. a benthic biologist. Yeah. <laughs> I'll remind everyone that I'm a geologist. All right, watch this. We're going to do a quick dive I'm having a lovely right time. Back. It's really beautiful to see all the stuff in the midwater. And it's enjoyable to learn something new. Uh, so they have asexual reproduction, and it is a dolioid, not a salt. Oh, what's a dolioid? Lower okay. center. Yeah, great question. Doli, <laughs> doliolid? Doliolid. Doliolid. Doliolid.
All right, so we are just con gonna conduct a quick uh, shift change here in the control room. So just stand by as we uh, pause for just a few moments. You ready, Chris? Yeah, give me a second, Rowan. Just trying to get the chair adjusted. Okay. All right, I'll push out a little bit here. And Sooner, there's a good, easy target for you. Yep, I see it right there. Go for it. Take that. Got a swimmer inside. Yes, this is another larvation, right? This time I see that actually has a larvation in it, or does it not? Or is it just a larvation house? It does indeed have a larvation in it. There's a thing in it. I've been on the hunt for looking for an actual larvation inside a larvation house. I think we That's like it. it. Very yeah. cool. We did see one earlier. Oh, that's okay. really neat. Let it go. Yep. He's up and bubbling. Mm-hmm. All right. Let me push out here. Finally, I got to see the larvation inside the larvation house. Excellent. Just in time. Yep. Yeah. Just in time. Oh, look at that. I think these midwater explorations are really fun because they do give you an opportunity to see things that, you know, many people don't ever get to see. And it's, it's really cool, even if I can't identify Upper anything left, that chilly. shows up on the screen. Gotcha. The nice thing is we have a chat room full of scientists exactly. doing it for us. Experts who are telling us everything. Is that a tiny, tiny jelly? It's the smallest jelly in the whole wide world. Oh, it's adorable. You can take more if you got it wrong. Swimming with style. Even the shore-based scientists think that one's cute. <laughs> How can you not? Oh, 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 five. Well, I was going that direction. <laughs> I'm going another way. It seems unfazed. It's a lot of energy to expend, though, to have to get back right back to the same place. Fortunately, there's food all around the mm -hmm. individuals, so it can just find a different piece of food. It's a good idea. Upper center, blue by. Yeah, I was pushing out there. Lower center jelly. Coming up. It's going to be pretty close. Okay. 
disappearing for a while. No, no. Oops, the camera tilt that. It's uh, one decimal one. Okay. Straight ahead. Bottom center, white slanted line. Understood. I couldn't remember the name, but I was like, this, I want to say siphonophore, but I know I'd be wrong, and then I wanted to say salve, and I know I'd be closer. It is again, the dolio. Dolio lid. Dolio lid. Dolio lid. <laughs> Bottom right. Fake siphonophore. South is right next door to the Dolio Lid. Well, the yeah, exactly. I was going to say the the short base scientist said it is it is a close relative of a self. Okay. Does this one have little fish in its caught in its tentacles? Oh yeah. Oh, good job. And this one actually is a cyclops. Max. Yeah. <laughs> it has been confirmed. There it Okay. It is a siphonac, siphonophore. Or siphonac. Is it next? It Seems makes like me feel better that you guys can't necessarily the pronounce stopped? these either. And you've Should had training. Uh, <laughs> oh, far right. Yep, coming in. So. Not in these pieces. Yeah. Is a net. Why not soft? Five. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. Centered up, I'll zoom more. Yep, it's coming over. Colobinema. So how does what you're seeing right now um, compare to the um, 900 meter layer, which I wasn't able to see. A lot more animals here. Yeah, there's a, a lot, lot more, more animals diversity. because we're getting closer to the deep scattering layer. Yeah, and as Sam was saying, a lot more diversity mm -hmm. of animals. Excellent. Especially when we first started this transect. We'll let it go. It was there's like that. speed okay. biology. <laughs> Jelly coming to center. Yep. This is certainly different than the last two dives we've had. It is. Ooh, what's that? Maybe that is another jelly. If it hooks around. Why does it only look like it has half of its tentacles? It's like the sun misses. Oh. Yeah. 
because it only has half of its tentacles? It does appear that it is missing quite a few. <coughs> or, no, nope, you can see some are kind of on the other side of it, too. But are they? <laughs> Alan says it's a solmissus again, but the tentacles are chewed off. Ooh. So this guy's had a, a hard life. life. Oh, no. Chewed off by, yeah. Anna here in the control room is asking, chewed off by what? I think we're all thinking it. What Upper right swimming line. And goes directly for the tentacles. <laughs> the most stingy part. Yeah. Let's go for the pink part of it. Another one that is a siphonophore. It has to be a siphonophore. Full line? Yes. Official com confirmation that it is we, in fact a siphonophore. We should have started keeping like track. We could have given you a point for every time you got it right, <laughs> taken away a point when it wasn't right. Minus Top two points right. when it's not right. Yeah, Top. you're right. Ooh. Oh. No, plus yeah, two for right, minus one if yeah. you're not right. You would I get a handicap? <laughs> would I get a handicap because I, I don't have any biological <laughs> training whatsoever? <laughs> no well, whose fault rocks? is that, Dad? No. <laughs> Sounds like a personal problem. Jelly <laughs> straight line, just lower center. See it. Ouch. Oh. <laughs> it's Maybe. really mean back here today. <laughs> You'll get us back on the, the next geology dive. It's true. It's true. And then after the dive, we can start talking mapping. It's going to throw in the sun. <laughs> Ooh. What is that? It literally looks like three flashlights stuck together. Or three jelly donuts. So Adrian is saying that it might be a radiolari radiolarian. Oh. But she said don't quote her. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. After being quoted on it. <laughs> Pilot, is it possible to get a little closer to this? Is it going to go us. out of you too quick? That's Max soon. It's coming at you pretty quick now. Yep. Oh, that doesn't sound positive. <laughs> Track and focus still coming in at you. It does kind of look that it way. It does. Yeah. It does. Okay, thank you. We've had jelly donuts, we've had cookie cutter sharks. Full wide. <laughs> You're trying to tell Let me something. Down <laughs> Come down below. Is it getting close to dinner time? <laughs> <laughs> snack time. That's all snack time. It's all snack time. Fish. Yep. Jelly coming to center, upper. Fish to the right, go to the fish. Understood. All right, we have some so more psychophones. Another salmisus that's not been chewed. <laughs> Um, it's a fish. Ooh. Lantern? Look at those teeth. That is so cool. Uh, you gotta look a little closer to it to see. Oh, yeah. I believe the. That's beautiful. It's called the barbel that they have coming off them, but I don't remember for sure. So they believe this is a viper, viper fish. fish. That is so cool. Oh, wow, look at this stacks in mind, you know. Go ahead, Ashley. So this is a, yep, this is a viper fish. So this is Colleonis. So you can see it's got that really long dorsal fin. So that first dorsal fin um, gets used as a lure. Um, Still you coming can also at you. See they, yep. they sit really nicely. They're really bright. great midwater sitting with predators. And if you look really carefully, they've got these really bright 
silvery scales, and on the outside, they've got this kind of thick layer of gelatin. Um, it's just like this jelly coat that surrounds the entire fish. And we have no idea what it's used for. Ooh. Oh, I see the thick layer of gelatin. These are pretty cool. They've got a lot of, yeah, it's, it's just, we, we don't know if it's for um, sensing water vibrations, if there are bioluminescent organs in it. Um, these fish are bioluminescent, so you can kind of see the spots on its side. All of them are nice tracking. So it creates its own light. Um, and some of those There's organs are most mm, likely just for good used measure. for counter illumination um, as sort of camouflage. But they have a lot of other organs that we don't really know what they're used for. So, full shot. Thank you. That was a really good zoom on the really cool fish. Awesome. Thank you Very so cool. much, Ashley. And uh, Mike Beckion is also commenting here that that gel layer is lost in Chalcott specimens. So again, so you really need to see another, it in situ. Another example that you really need to see these in, in situ. Yeah. Kind of the theme of this midwater dive. Yeah, wow, look at this one. Another solenesis. A solenesis. Not true. <laughs> Maybe light okay. you we'll pull down, let you push ahead. <laughs> You'll play chewed, not chewed. I'm going to play <laughs> correct or not correct. <laughs> south or not south. <laughs> so that's, that's actually the game we're playing now. Is it, is it a self or not self? <laughs> that's all we're going for? I think yes. you can handle it. <laughs> I'm not sure I can handle that, actually. Although I think if I guess not a self for most things, I would probably be pretty good. The good news is, is that though while the three of us are not midwater scientists, we do have a whole cadre of them on shore who are helping us and helping to sort of really get a good idea of what these organisms are. We may be joking back here, but for them this yep. is uh, some really important science really that can bright. help put a lot of their work in context because they get to see these things in situ and in place with the other organisms yeah, that we observe yep. throughout mm -hmm. this transect. And that onshore contingency of scientists is kind of what makes the diversity of our mission possible. Because we were talking far about right how, line like, on the edge. We, we had a biology come geology dive first. We had a, mm -hmm. a more mm -hmm. biology dive on. Took over your, your biology. Yeah, took over my geology kind of flip flopped with that. Mm -hmm. And so while we have. Let it go. Okay a geologist and we have a more benthic scientist aboard we're not limited to just studying that we can do these midwater dives and have just as much Top more center, scientific white vertical line like, well more we have definitely more Take scientific it. experience on shore weighing in and even mm -hmm. for the dives where it is our areas of expertise Arrower. we still have um scientists calling in and, and really helping identify <laughs> things that we can't no it's really wonderful because every time there's a question you can ha have somebody sort of phone a friend and help you out. In okay. real time, which is kind of the craziest part of the whole thing. Let Absolutely. It go. And right. with, um, with telepresence, we are actually so able translucent. to yeah. it's have a small. larger science team than could fit on any one ship, mm -hmm. which I think is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That this, this technology has advanced to such a place that you can really have a meaningful conversation with shore and Another really jelly. do have people weighing in from jelly all over the world being able to tune in and and join us while we're here in the azores we have people joining us from all over the u.s and a couple <coughs> places internationally joining us for this dive which is pretty exciting and some of them are willing to stay up at all type times all of the hours. night or, or morning to you know to, to join us and to see the amazing things that we're getting to see and, um, but I also love the fact that the public can be part of, of the expedition. It's not just limited to our ship and shore based scientists. I had two friends watching our dive yesterday from work. They had their computers up for work and then they set up separate computers where they just watched the dive all day. And, wow. you know, they really enjoyed it. They were texting me and saying, this is, this is the best day ever. And, and I think that bringing that go? Um, right. excitement of exploration to anyone who wishes to watch it is is really really important i agree i completely agree and what's cool about it too is not just that like so yeah you can tune in with any internet connected device 
but on our website, oceanexplorer.noah.gov, there's also lots of material for like activities for kids. And if you're a teacher, ways that you can incorporate deep sea science into your classroom. And we have red tons and of real. those resources available Copy. online and available. They also have them, um, for some of them that are relative to this expedition, we've translated them into Portuguese okay, because small. we are in the Azores, which is part of Portugal. Well, why? Let it go. And all that content is available on our website, oceanexplorer.noah.gov. I really like how you guys have the lights laid out. Okay, pilot and co-pilot, we have about 10 minutes left on the transect. Understood. Thanks, Fernando. Yep. Okay, folks, we have about 10 minutes left at this transect. White, yep, up, low jelly. right. Go ahead now. It's gone. Yep. Upper center, white line. Upper center, go for it. That same thing before that disappeared. Yep. It's so. Yeah. Yeah. Head oh. over to the left. I can bring it back if you want it. Yeah, I can't really tell uh, what light pool it's in. He's up above us. I'll let him go. So pilot and co-pilot, the ship is not moving. Are you guys happy with this flow or? Yeah, it might be a little slow, but this is what we what we had when we sat. We'll uh, we'll leave it for here and see what it looks like on the next transect. Okay. You want that rolling? Yep. Swimmer. Okay, let it go. Okay. Swimmer. Little fish. Uh, center, the lower, center, center. Yep. This be a nice smooth target. Set you up for a beauty. What's that? This is another one of those tina flowers that we were seeing earlier. Low bait. Yeah, the Bathysiro tina flowers. Which most of the ones we've been seeing have been this this clear one. We saw the one yellow one earlier. There you go. Yep. Going for it? Yeah. Make sure white whale will get it eventually. Yeah, Deb, is this a cell? I think this is a dolelid. There you go. Look at this biologist. I say confidently before I know what, if it actually is. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we have Mike, Mike agrees with me. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty high up there, Ron. So impressed with myself. I think it'd be more impressive if I could remember it tomorrow, but I really enjoy getting to learn about the, the midwater, which I just don't know very much about. Oh, Fernando, I think that flow might be pretty good. Well, it looks like the the yellow Tina 4 earlier may have been something a little different. Center left. Uh, the Lampotes. 
is my guess at the pronunciation of it. Did we see a black Tina 4 right at the beginning of the dive, or was that something different? We no, the one that moved. One. No, yeah. that was a. That, was, that, that was something different. Yes. Oh, pretty. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess. Going away from me. Let go. <clears throat> Lower center. Go ahead. Tina four. Great imagery. Now is that another Tina four? It is, and this one we did sample uh, earlier in this transect. We were seeing. A bunch of these. Mm -hmm. I think when I first when I first wandered into the conversation, you were saying that this one had horns. Am Did I making that up? Maybe I am making that up. No, you're not. So it really does. It has little it horns for cheating things. This is great. This is one we sampled, and then the next one we got really nice video of us. So this is another another chance to get some really nice video. Yes, we can have the actual specimen and then have so many in situ observations. So, so it has four projections at the front end, so it has four horns, not just two, which is what I assumed when you said horns. Oh, I see <laughs> them now. Beautiful. Right, so whatever have I, I been missing, guys? Off. A lot of these. So <laughs> I didn't see this one on the... So they're saying the pet name of this hey, one is Tinoceros, which it rhymes with rhinoceros. <laughs> <That's a good laughs> so Todd, I'll just come back under you and make a turn to starboard. So was that one collected? That like one had oh, been collected, wow. yeah. Okay. And now we've seen several, several times we've, we've seen it. It's, it's really great. No, uh, sure. So, so far we've collected two Ctino fours, right? One Want the jelly? Yeah, we can take them pretty yeah. small. He's close to you. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, and it seems that this orn Tino four has been also collected Linda. in the previous yep. expedition, so on dive three. At eighteen hundred meters, so and it looks like so far these Tinoceros is Tinoceri, <laughs> whatever it is, <laughs> um, in plural, uh, are undescribed so far, and there oh, wow. there are at least three species, and who knows how many more. So so this could be one of the species that will be uh, described. It could be. Oh wow. Upper left line diagonal. I wonder how in the past would these two species be described if they would be collected, you know, with other types of gears. Yeah, so you'd never see. It would probably be very difficult. Yeah, you would never see how they look like uh, live. I mean, would these, so would these even make it up in a net or anything like that? Like, I would imagine they would be very destroyed when mm -hmm. they are. Mm -hmm. All right, Deb, you're up. Siphonophore. Correct. Did you look at the chat? No, <laughs> actually, I didn't. <laughs> I am winning this game, people. Physonect <laughs> <laughs> siphonophore. Okay, yeah, that I had to look at the chat us. for. Mm -hmm. Let him go. 
Mike, thanks for feeding me the answers. It's I, I mean it is it's really interesting though. Well, actually, after, this is now after a while you get to kind of see it. This is the end of this transect. No turn. You get a good delta there. I'll start coming back. Yep. So if you guys will need to announce that on the broadcast. Okay. Yeah, I believe we're going up to There's a little light in my ear, Todd. There you go. How's that? <laughs> All right, so we've reached yes, the end of the transect. Um, and Sam, what's our Sam, what's our next uh, depth range that we'll be going to? Follow me down with your camera. So we're just finishing up our mm -hmm. 700 meter transect. I keep getting lost. Um, I believe now we're going up to 600 meters to stay in the, spin now. the center of the uh, deep scattering layer. So hopefully we see another diverse and um, exciting, exciting transect. All right, pushing out. All right, I'm gonna start getting the bias ramped up. Oh, that down. Should be coming up here shortly. So you just put in 10% forward way? Uh, 10 to 25, depending on Streaming. how it streams. Yeah. Auto head out. Auto head out for me. Okay, I'm starting to winch up pretty fast. Sounds good. Okay, next step's going to be. 500 meters, I mean 600 meters. 600, so Six a short zero one. Zero. Yep. Okay. And then when we get there, uh, you guys go into flight information and then let's take a Niskin uh, sample Understood. before starting the next transect and it's going to be only 30 minutes. Okay, so a pretty short one. Yep. We're going to do one 30 mi minute transect at 600 and then another 30 minute transect at 500 and then we just recover. 600, 500, recover, understood. Okay, 30 to 31 meters a minute. Okay. Delta looks good. Hundred meters. Yes, we're going to.
Oh, actually, this is now. I think you're muted. You me to slow down? Yeah, if you want to slow down. Yeah, I think you need at least 80. Okay. That's what I was using. All right. Uh, so we're pretty much at 600. They're going to get into Chris, flying you've got formation. zero thrust right now. Yep. I'm just going to push, get auto depth here. Oh, the depth engaged. Oh, we're staying at 600. 600, yep, we sure Happy are. That. Okay, let me just get a little high. Push down just a little bit. Once you start going under me, I'll pick up even more. Yep. I don't want to go too high yet. Understood. Mm. Just going to set that back to 600. Mm -mm. All right. Are you backing up? I was backing up. Are you backing up? I am backing up now. Okay, coming up a little. So we are now at 600 meters depth, so we will just wait here a little bit. We'll have uh, another Niskin bottle uh, closed to collect water for EBNA analysis, and then we'll start on uh, uh, our transect. You're heading stone match, so uh, if you're backing up, you might not be backing yeah, up. You're you're right. kind of going all over. Yeah, you should probably engage shadow heading. Okay. And then maybe you can use PTZ to look for him. You oh. see where you are? Yeah, off. You kind of went off to the side. I'd stretch back out and just do Understood. it again. Okay. Coming You'll back out. Oh, they're heading off. Faster, just do it in one shot. Yeah, I'm going to come straight back out. There you are. Yep. Thank you, Fernando. Yep. Yeah, I think the easiest way is just engage auto heading and just back with the joystick. Yeah. And he can follow you with the PTC. Yeah. Um, it, it, you get there even faster than I can find you on the PTC. So. Yeah. All right. You happy there? Yeah. All right. Let's start backing. Science and Shoreside. Can I get uh, one more reminder of uh, any targets or sample that you're looking for? You find me in your Titan there. I don't even see where you see that. You'd have to rotate. I don't think you're set up to look. Still behind me. Yeah, still coming back. All right, there. Look good though. You're coming straight back, yep. pretty much. You should end up uh, right on my starboard side. There you are. There you are. Yep. All right, I'm just going to make a turn to starboard here. So I think we're still settling out here at 600 meters. Um, and as soon as, as everything is all set up, we'll begin the transect. But right now, we're just hanging out a little bit. Yeah, I think I had auto heading engaged, and I hit it by accident and turned it off.
Okay, I got you at 45. I'm coming down to a delta of like 16. Understood. Let me know when you're ready for that Niskin, if you're happy with this uh, streaming angle. Yeah, I think it's coming straight at me. Speed looks good. I think you can take that Niskin whenever you're ready. Okay. Delta 16 coming up on hydraulics. Okay, uh, watch lead. This is now. They're getting ready right now for the Niskin. Video, Niskin. we're gonna take the Niskin. Video is ready. I got the thumbs up. I'm ready right here. Okay, ready when you are, copilot. Okay, firing now. Fired. All right. He just closed the bottle. 17, 40, 14. I'm gonna take this long skinny right in the center. Rolling. Copy skinny. Okay, we're set up. How many bottles do we have? Four? First samples. Five sam left. Adrian's asking how many we have left. Niskin bottles or nope. suction no, samplers? Samples. I think we have. Um, uh, it was bottle number five. Watch Lee. Excellent. I think we have two suction samples and left. And then um, I think we're ready to start the transect, so let's start it at 1715. Okay, go ahead, pilot. I don't know what you mean, the bottom or the top. The bottom. <laughs> is that the head? That's his face at yeah. the bottom. Understood. What is that? What was that? Cover jellies. Got him. Let's see which one's that better. Let's go to the bottom one. Okay. And also, answer Roland's question. I think we would want a sample of a film mixer, okay. which was All those dinner right. plate jellies. So okay. if we yeah. come upon them, we'll set up for that. Sounds good. Full wide? Yeah, he's below us. So, so this is, is a type of jellyfish? It yes. is. It's what makes it special? I think that's that a wrong? Nope. Nope. jelly biologist question. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't let it come to us. I wish Alan was on to answer that, but no, they're still trying to work out the taxonomy, the, the taxonomy for Simicis. Um So there's a bunch of cryptic species. And so Google Lindsay with Jamstech is actually um, taking a lot of samples to try to work out their taxonomy. Very cool. Yeah. So probably revising the genus. So Mises. Tina Ford with the line. So is this another one of those physonic siphonophores? All right. So we have actually by? started our transect here. And we've got 45 minutes at... Oh, 30 minutes. I'm sorry. This one's 30 minutes at at uh, roughly 600 meters depth. Ooh, what's that? That's another one of those. Oh, it's another one of the the tinophores. Tino orange tinophores. They're a. Uh, they actually seem fairly common around here. I'm gonna let them go, Rowan. Sliding off. Full light. I'll wait for you to get pushed out. Well, yep. defense to your flight here. It's amazing. So you really can see that we are on this deep scattering layer, which is a massive aggregation of planktonic life that migrates um, day and night up and down in the water column. So can we get a description of that uh, jelly that you guys were looking to for a sample? Just so I know what to look for. Either um, Sam yeah, or Short... Oh, so thank you. Perfect. Center white. Okay, sorry y'all. This is Adrian. Yep. I can give it. Um, so it's the Salmicis. They're clear, see-through. Um, it was the one that had chewed up chemicals that we saw before and seen multiple of them throughout the dive. 
but they're also called um, the common name is a dinner plate jelly because they look like a dinner plate. They're very flat with tentacles branching off from the main body. Copy. Thank you. Thanks, Adrian. There's a target upper right. Uh, that's not the one they're looking for, but we'll damage it. And that's a jelly, but not the one we're looking for? No, I don't think so. Yeah, the one really looks like a dinner plate. So much lighter than the bell. Still very pretty, though. Let her go. So is this the one, Alicreas jelly? That seems so. Jelly, that's in. Where you at? Dead center. I wonder if we haven't seen yet any cephalopod. No squid in the water column, no octopus. Hey, it's a great question for Mike. Sure. I don't know the answer. Have we seen any during this dive we were hoping for? Really small guy. Yeah. About that white. Bright white. Yep. I'm going to come inside. Lead it. <laughs> One of our shore based scientists, yeah. Alan, said that the squids are smart, so they run away <laughs> from the vehicle. And Mike said that that makes them a little bit hard to study. Yeah. <laughs> Evidently, this is another siphonophore. A hippopoidus? Hippopoidus siphonophore. Hippopoidus. That's an unusual one. I really wonder what kind of morphological characteristics you can study, you can look oh into. Oh man, it's so hard to damage. Put a name to this. Go. Oh, Hippopodius. Push back up. This Just is all soft parts. Mm -hmm. I'm actually making small drawings of all of these as we see them. <laughs> That's a great idea. Arrow worm. Maybe just get What's a snap of it. That thing, Joanna. Oh, I think that's probably an arrow worm. Teeth of gnats. They are very abundant um, in the deep scattering layer. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, hmm. Maybe I should have waited a little bit to see the, <laughs> to see the zoom in. Let's go up to the tip. He's going up. No, actually, that does not look so much like a cute of nut. That's a so fish. So I'm wondering. Perhaps some sort of fish larvae? Yeah, oh, that's a... Oh, yeah. I'll let him go. It was another it, snipe it eel, does, evidently. Yeah, it does, it does have this uh, arrowy shape like the cute of nuts does. So next time... I'll wait a little bit until we zoom in. Oh, or not a snipe eel. So yeah, we've seen another one of those xenophores. I think we can all agree it was a fish. Yeah. Jelly coming in center. There's a little jelly in front of us. Mm -hmm. There was something off to the left, but I don't know what it was. It disappeared too quickly for me. Aren't those beautiful to watch? Very calming. You're not, you're not the one, one on the focus sticks. <laughs> we let him yeah. go. So we're starting to, to be able to distinguish them. Well, you are. <laughs> <laughs> 
another one. Yep, that one, that might be the one they're looking for. And as we zoom in on this guy, um, no. what is that? I doubt it. Is that, it's another jellyfish, isn't it? But it's, oh, it is, but its it is. arms are yeah, like extended and higher than its bell. Yeah, it is different. It's again. Oh, so this would be a potential collection. Oh, is, um, I think it's going to be above us. Pilot, is it possible to collect this? Uh, no. getting really far away. <laughs> yeah, he's above us. Thanks, okay, sorry. Thank you. So sorry, um, shore-based scientist. That one was already above us by the time we even had a chance to look at it, so it, yeah. it made it away. Was that the dinner plate one? Seems that this could be another one. The Sol Maris instead of Sol Missus? Don't know. So I reckon that they're... Uh, the name of this of this genre are related to their shape, this round shape like the sun. Like the because, sun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there that goes. That's definitely the name in by? Portuguese. Sun is soul. Mm -hmm. In Portuguese, so. Jelly lower right. Yeah, George here in the chat room is saying didn't get a good look at trying to work at the same time. I really know how that feels, George, having followed a number of these expeditions mm. while I was back in the office. <laughs> it's very difficult to focus. <laughs> and especially with these water comb dives, it's yeah. you snooze, you lose. It's just so soothing. <laughs> okay, is this one of those alicreas? Oh no, this is a different one. So an Alistera. Or is that just a little spell? Yeah, perhaps a different one than what we've seen before. Lots of tentacles hanging there mm -hmm. from the bell. Let's go. Let's see if we find another one of those soul misses. We've been seeing them on most of our transects. Mm. Left of center, lower. We still have got okay. maybe 25 minutes to go, so fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's another one of those larvation houses, and yeah. it does ha it seems to have it's an the larva. Yeah. Let it go. Okay. We see that waving in there. Coming left of center. Also, something in the background. Which one do you want? What is that one? I'll go with this one. Okay. It's those. Look, there's two. Is this actually a salt? No, or it's is a dolly. It oh, yeah. that's the dolly. Yep. It's been plaguing us all day thinking it's a salt. <laughs> it's very close. Yeah. Well, very distant though. <laughs> no, no, it's it's a, this one's okay, asexually set. reproducing. Okay. Jelly upper right, going off screen right. Yeah, I'll let that go. Yep.
flat jelly lower left going off it's bottom. It's so interesting now. I'm so used to. Yeah, sorry, to I didn't see that. Uh, one on the lower right. But yet, as soon as you move out of your area, that one's probably the sample. It's just an all new world. Yeah. No, it's that's got why <laughs> the scientific names exist. Yeah. No, it's got more of a dome. Yeah. So this one looks like an Alicreas, I think. It's oh, like an Alistera. Okay, so it does seem that we have these two different ones here on this transect. Okay, let it go. Yep, yep and so Alan oh, said that yeah. the, the difference is the spikes on the bell. On the top of the bell. Okay. Sometimes it's hard to see when you're yeah. really quickly zooming yeah, around. This one Oh, nope, you were right. Yeah, he's there above us. So this one was up. Coming back down. Alistera. Mm -hmm. Oh. No, we'll let him go. I thought he was going to come back down to us. How about that guy coming sooner? Yep. We'll be able to <laughs> tell right, the difference be between the two. Oh, you're up. Alicrea. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 50 50 yeah, chance. Yeah, exactly. So that's not you just got to say it with confidence. <laughs> Well, there's that fuzzy up top. There's another one up center. Yep. That'll be the last one you can get before you got to push, right? Yep. Okay, now that looks actually quite different. Have we seen this before? Look at those tentacles. That is... That is very different. Very different. Let that one go wrong. <coughs> we have a guess of Ropalanema oh. for that one. Yeah. Oh, that was one of those dinner plate jellies that went by mm -hmm. very quickly. Upper left, upper coming to center. Got it. Their belly is super flat on the top. Oops, oops. It's just looking at the morphological differences mm -hmm. is so interesting. Yeah. So this is a tin of horn. I'm not sure if it's the same that we've seen earlier with us, long lobates. I think it is. Those long lobes, maybe this is just a smaller one. I think it is. Every time I think it's something new, it turns around. And so it seems that this Rosa cilia, um, it's not really, so they're not really bioluminescent, it's just the way they are reflecting light, the light from the yeah, RV. let them go. <coughs> That just ran by. Yeah, that comes center right. Is this another? Oh. No. Good tilt up. And it's also difficult to say when they are smaller than I the know. typical size, typical <laughs> yeah. sized ones. Again, this looks different. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think we saw one of these earlier. Yeah. Oh, look, 
Wow. Look at the color. That purple shimmering, mm -hmm. you know, spreading through. Wow. Mike Vecchion says a strange Tina for and I agree. Yeah. It's very open. It's almost mm -hmm. like some mix between a jellyfish and a Tina for. Got it, Rome. We'll let him go. <coughs> That's the Medusa-shaped lobate, Alan says. Mm -hmm. And for those ones, it looks like Alan's saying that they enclose the prey and then eat them. So it makes sense why it has that big, wide I wonder how big of a prey they can eat, though. How big are so, they? It's so, so fragile, yeah. so. <laughs> oh, and this looks like one of those Calicophoron mm. cephonophores that we've seen. Trail down it to the left. Number of times. Slowly. Let's see. Looks like it. I did Let's see, see at the tip. Yeah. That's a long, oh, looks actually different though. So let's see. Uh, yes, it Praine. is oh, what actually, one. this is now. Uh, just to let you know, we have about 10 minutes left on this transfer. Full screen. Copy that now. Thank you. There we go. So for the folks at home, we now have I'm an trying to find you that room. sample. Uh, we have now roughly 10 minutes left of this transect. So it would be great if a soul missus would just come by. Just got to put those positive soul missus vibes out there. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom, going off bottom, possible sample. Trying to come back. Hmm? Nope, it's got the horns. Okay. Let it go. Center. I think that's the dome one. With the horns. Yep. Okay, that's another one of those alicreas. Seven. Blue So Mike's saying that that siphonophore that we saw earlier is the one that gets longer than a blue whale. Oh no so way! Really? Colonial organism that just gets enormous. Oh my gosh! We wouldn't be able to sample that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. We need a Left. much larger maybe it container for that. Ooh. Very small. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to chase that one. The full light. Don't. This one also looks different, yeah, actually. Different. different color. The tentacles. The tentacles. Look. look at those colors. It's hard colors. to tell if they're yeah. just contracted and that's yeah. why they're reflecting light differently. Look at those colors. Blue and pur or purple, actually. Purple and green. Oh, is that a sample? 
You guys want a sample? Do we need, do we want a sample? Let's check with the, with the chat room here. It's just in front of the drawer now. Yes. yes. It's yes, yes, we could yes, sample. Yeah, if we're still on time. Okay, drawer out. That would be great, thank you. Jar light on. Ready when you are. I'm come up just a hair. Uh, I'm going to tilt you down. No. Take it, suction. It's <laughs> on. It's down below you. Just go yeah. drive to it. Coming down. Okay, He's making a run for it. Yeah. Let's see. Tilting up on your... Yep. There it is. I'm going to tilt down a little. Okay, here it comes. It's a little below you. Yep. Suction. Engage. Suction on. It might be easier to drive without auto theft. Yeah, take that out, man, and just free free flight. Understood. Except you're very buoyant, right? Yep. You're very buoyant. You're going way above it. No, it's still out in front of me. No, it's below. Yeah, but it's below you. That's below me, you think? Yes. If okay. you look at the manips, you get better sense yeah, of how okay. high it is. Understood. Oh, look at that. It's, it's getting close to your there camera. You go. <laughs> it's like a ghost. It's still there, it just flew back out. It was a good try though. Still in front of you. Yeah, it's above me. See it in the manip cams. Yep, I'm coming okay, up. Okay, you're it. right below me. Um, Delta's what? safe. I'm going to come oh. up a little bit. Did it come back? Yeah, that's still it. He's taunting us now. Is it the same one? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm ready on your pump. Pumps on. Oh, look. Oh. oh, wow. Wow, that's really... Just below. Mm -hmm. Coming tip. back. Yep. It's going to go in there. Oh, it's my it. goodness. It's going. It's trying. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Inside the drawer. Right there, Coming there. back. Below you. Yep. This is quite the hunt. Yeah. He's really decided to... That's what's game. left of it. Oh. Just Love below it. Pumps on. Okay, so Alan here is saying that the, it has been sampled um, in the Pacific, actually, and so there's there might I be think the possibility we're to let that go. species. We fought the good fight. Sure in. Yeah, I wonder how large ranges um, of these um, the species could be. Where am I at, Fernando? All the way back. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, way yeah, back. Way back. Yeah, yeah Alan says too have that push they out its tentacles. That's the way they always find yep. them in nets. So yeah, just you're push out. You're 180. Oh, okay. Yep. So without the tentacles. Oh, actually, yes. So you're 180. So you gotta get. It. Is that side. the end of the transect? Uh, we have four minutes, oh, so we have to figure out where he yeah. is. Oh. Yeah. So you've got one turn in, so you need yeah. to spin left. Indeed. Tail biting sample <laughs> <Yeah>. Just back <laughs> up and then spin left. Backing up. Indeed. Yeah, you're tail to tail. Yeah, there you go. You're it's right there. To sample all the so all if the you, yeah. <laughs> they don't run away so much. No. Oops, sorry, that was your camera. Although that rock sample almost Filting got straight away down yesterday. on <laughs> Sirius. Yeah. I think the best would be just to like face like yeah, you opposite just to him. Opposite and push up. That's where you were. Yeah, yeah. just back straight up. Kay. Just like normal. Understood. Yeah, like you can see him in your telecam now. So keep oh. going and yep. just match his heading and then just straight back as okay. we did before. Not with that attitude, there you go. Huh? <laughs> oh man, he wasn't cooperating. Yeah, as soon as you got to thrust backwards, it's like, yeah. and yeah. there's all his tentacles. He got something of him. Probably not enough. Yeah, I didn't see anything going in, into the suction jar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might leave your um, Z bias at negative 30 or negative 28, so, so that when you it. come out of Z bias, yeah. you're immediately neutral and you're not flying yeah. all up and down, you know? Yeah. Auto depth works independently of wherever the Z bias is. Yeah. So. It's a 
keep, keep coming back. I'm still pushing. So actually, the, the, the end of the transect is in one minute, 15 seconds, so. You want me to push back out? Is that what I'm hearing? So we've got just one minute to just, go. Just a minute of transect here now. So. So unless you we could find a soul just climbing you, into You ended up way <laughs> over to the <laughs> right side of uh, <laughs> Sirius. You see in the fish eye. Although I wonder because we've Yeah, you're like way over there. Uh, sampling that you've and you're backwards, earlier. so it's just yanking if, uh, on your tether. We'll find okay. a few other At this point, just go out. Yeah, okay. just push out. Actually. Coming back out. See where you are? You're like way case. up there to the right. Yeah. Oh, there is that the soul missus? No. Killed Sirius's camera up to find you. Yeah. Okay, watch lead. You can see in the main camera right there. You're like all the way over there. Yeah. So yeah, keep pushing out and you'll see yourself in the tail cam. Okay, watch lead. We're gonna call this the end of transect number five. They're getting in position and then we'll go up to a depth of 500. Copy that. Now. So we've just ended here now our transect at 600 meters depth and we will now be um, getting into position to ascend another 100 meters to start our 500 meter depth transect. Yeah, I think you're in position. Um, yep, you stretched out. I'm coming out of auto head. Understood. Auto heading out. Put some forward way in. Get my Z bias filled up. You gotta kill uh, out of depth. Yep. Yeah, there you I go. I don't have the Z bias. All right. So next depth is gonna be 500. All right, Todd, you want to start tickling it up? Yeah, I'm waiting for you. You got see bias in. Okay. Five hundred for Nana? Oh uh, yes. Okay. Okay, winch settled in. Okay. I had no idea where I was at. Yeah, it's really easy to lose track of yeah. where you Chasing are. Chasing that thing, I couldn't have. Yeah. If, if you watch your butt That's camera and just watch, the lights just stay oh, right on center line. Yeah. Up. And make small adjustments yeah, if you need to, you know? Yeah. And then just I think they're taunting us keep it point. Do it quick, you know? Because yeah. if you do it quick, you're not going to get off course. Yep. Do it quick, and uh, you'll, boom, you'll see yourself in Sirius's cameras, like, still right away. The, the yeah. deep if you take your time, you're going to end up, like, either over there the, or over there. Yeah. If the vehicle moves through it, we can kind of see it scattering and then coming back together as things run away from the, the noise and the lights, <laughs> um, which is always interesting to watch. Um, but, yeah, so we'll see what kind of things this transect will have in store. Who knows, maybe it will be sold me those bonanza there. We're going to be so sick of seeing Yeah, the easiest way to use there. the PTC <laughs> is just it. to bring it all the way back until you see the lights, and then just bring it a little bit down, and he would have that reference right there. Yeah. So, like, you're, yeah, so you that is probably... Find me now in the back. Yeah. But and then I can see myself backing up. Uh, that's the front, yeah. That was oh. the. 
on right there. The that's back. the lights. So yeah. if you go a little bit down, he'll see himself. Um, yeah, right there. Yeah, then I can see myself center. All right, 30 meters to go, roughly. I think the Sirius aft camera should be pointed down a little more. Be more useful. So when you're coming up to your target depth, do you start spinning the Z-bias off and then just immediately hit auto depth? Uh, I, s I don't punch in auto depth because it just rails the thrusters yep. immediately at 100. I just like push and hold so it resets it to zero, yep. lets it float for a second, and then punch in auto depth. That's usually what I do. Yeah. Or I'll use the stick manually to kind of slow the ascent a little okay. bit, and then I'll punch it in. Yeah. But yeah, because knowing that you might have to chase a sample, yeah, I always have Z bias ready. Back to zero. Yeah. Yep. So that when I come out of auto depth, it's not you're not. All right. You know. Z bias is off. I'm gonna float up to 500. Okay. Auto depth engaged. 500. Let me keep coming a little bit. All right. All right, so when you've got a good delta, we put auto heading in, we're going to back up, we're going to find you and your Titan cam, and we're not going to get off course. Yeah. Okay, so um, depending on how long you take to get in position, Yep. Uh, we need to start coming up at 18.50. Five zero? Oh, no, sorry, 15.15. 15, 15, five. Five. okay. Yeah. Okay. You got this. You happy with that? Yeah, I'm already punched in on auto he heading. All right, my auto heading's engaged, coming straight back. And then, as a co-pilot, as you start to get slack in the tether, I like the delta to go a little higher, so you don't end up with the tether like up yeah. on your light bar yeah, or up on nice up on top of surface serious, we're seeing here right? Yep. But if you start with a delta over 20, yeah. then you're just yeah. kind of fighting it. Yeah. Right there, you're in yeah. 50 C. So I see it now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So Delta yeah, 22. Yeah, we've been pretty lucky with uh, sea conditions, actually. Don't say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. But Find some serious work. HD straight down. <laughs> yep. No, it's been beautiful out here so far. I should be coming out in your main HD shortly. Yeah, you'll shortly. be right there. There we are. You got a one turn to the right, so you definitely want to spin left. Yep. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make my spin to the left. So, so again, for folks that might be joining us just now, we are here on the Azores Plateau, and this is the third uh, dive of this uh, expedition. Um, this is our mid-water dive. Um, that we're doing it 35 nautical, roughly 35 nautical miles west of San Miguel Kay. Island. And we are to the Pushing south out. of the okay. deep Hirondale Basin. Lowering Delta. And the main objective of this dive really is to explore and characterize the midwater communities here I'm on the Azores Plateau. To center line. So we've been doing a number of Okay, uh, at the end I'm going to give you guys about two minutes so you can take that turn out. Todd. All the way from uh, yeah. starting at 1900 meter steps, then 1200, 900, 700, 600. Now we're on our last transect at 500 meter steps uh, still inside the deep scattering layer and we've been seeing a wide variety of planktonic life from thinophores, siphonophores, arrowworms, so ketognats, a number of squid Okay, watch lead. Um, we're ready for the next and transect. We are just about to start our When you're ready, pilot. Transect. Oh, actually, hold on one second. Uh, we're watch lead. Niskin, right? 
There's uh, no more no, Niskins. No more Niskins, okay. but uh, just check the current. Are you good with that current before we start? Yeah, let me give it a second to settle out here for now. Sure. That looks like it's coming pretty straight at us, right? I think so. Good speed. Yeah, I think we're good with that. Copy that. Okay, watch lead. This is nav. We're going to start the transect at 17.54. So you get that for about 30, Todd. Copy that on the now. Z, Thank you. just in prep. 30, yeah. Yep. Minus 30, right? Yep. Okay. Tricks of the trade. Yeah, that way you're just giving bumps on the verticals instead of trying to hold a steady vertical, right? Yeah, exactly. That's really hard to keep it steady when you're... Well, that's why I was probably fighting it so much. You want the swimmer rolling? And then watch lead, this is now. Brian, sorry. We're gonna stop this transect a little bit short because we have to come up, so it's gonna end around 1812. Copy that now, thank you. Yeah, right, we'll let it go. So for folks on shore, this uh, transect will be um, somewhat shorter. Yeah, it's going to be about uh, 18 minutes. Yeah, we'll let him go. He's up in my brow. So this will be roughly 18 to 20 minutes. Push back out. If you see anything, Brian, feel free to call it up. A little swimmer, yep. Let him swim in. Oh, that's, and we've got a, yeah. We've got a very fast fish going. Yep, let him go. Close. Oh wow. Would this be some sort of a radiolarian or actually I don't know how small of an organism um, we can zoom into here. I wonder what the size of that would be. He's above me. That's the hardest part. Yeah, I would sort of reset. So Ashley, you're saying a cyclophone. I think that was the fish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was the fish. Mm -hmm. Take that one, Brian. Oh, we're seeing another one here. I really wonder what this is. Yeah, that looks like a Tino Oh, no, four. that's a Tino yeah. 4, yeah. So it's not the same that we just saw earlier. But this one is different from those low weight ones. Looks like it to me. <laughs> yeah. And it has that central part of the body yellow, and the other one was a bit mm -hmm. reddish. Wow. Wow. Look at that. That's a cyphonophore. Yeah, he's right in front of us. Let him go. It's actually a cyphonophore. <laughs> oh, it is a cyphon cyphonophore. Oh. That, is it a cyphonophore or not game? It's getting harder and harder. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Adrian.
There must be some sort of evolutionary yep. swimmer meaning or to, the, to these take completely the different groups uh, develop somewhat similar morphologies. Yeah, that convergent evolution. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah we'll let him go. Yeah, I imagine it's a way to both help stay suspended in the water column and then, yeah. according to the chat, it's a that siphonophore had its stem all the way pulled in, so it probably has a reason to extend it during when it's feeding versus when it's mm -hmm. swimming or floating. Is my uneducated <laughs> guess on that one. Not the swimmer center. It's another cyclotron. Yeah. Oh, yeah. very fast. Let go. Jelly, pick or choose. Now they're up high. Now. Yeah, I'm just waiting because I got that wrong line the other <laughs> time. <laughs> oh, I'm not scared mm. of getting things wrong. Yeah, I think that's a key for yep. that. <laughs> <laughs> Not that center. Copepod. No, that's actually a copepod. Copepod, yeah. Yeah, look at that. As soon as I saw I the think, yeah. antenna, antenna off the top. Oh. Coming out and click. Yeah, we haven't seen them in detail, have we? Yet. No. These pteropods. That's why it's always a guess. Sea <laughs> butterflies or sea angels. They're beautiful. They are. All right, I'm the push And back also out quite front. vulnerable, actually, to acidification, especially the shelled ones, because they have these aragonitic shells. Since the flow is a little bit more from yeah, the west, fragile. I think it's a little quicker. Yeah, um, we could turn our heads quicker, a little bit. There's yeah. already Across evidence this. that because of acidification, those shells adjust? are becoming thinner and more brittle. Yeah, come over like oh, wow. 270. So they're actually good. Um, 265. Very good group uh, for monitoring the effects of ocean acidification. Yeah, there's like the canary in the coal mine. Yeah, exactly. I'm at like. It's 280 scary. now. It you is. don't really understand how like. broad-reaching those impacts are. Indeed. Maybe a little, even a little more. Let me give that a second to go off and see what happens. That's a little more straight down and my they screen. They are a very important component of the zooplankton. I was getting so the diagonal the snow, you know. Cascading yep. effects that that may have on the still coming left to right for me. It's just um, can yeah, be really step by um, breath. catastrophic. Yeah. Let me push out here, Brian. It's about ten more minutes, Fernando. Uh, yeah, that is correct. So we're having a, there's some conversation going on here in the chat about Archithutes. So the, the giant squid, that's exactly why what we wanted to see in this dive. <laughs> it's not over yet. Uh, no. 
10 minutes to see an architect. <laughs> <laughs> We have been seeing a lot of whales and dolphins around the ship. That's true. Just saying. <laughs> You're getting kind of out there on me, Chris. Yeah, I'm off stick, setting it float back. Yeah, the Azores is actually a pathway from the migration of many whales um, here in the central North Atlantic. I believe that. As well as many people sailing across the Atlantic. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So also a good <laughs> human migratory pathway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very it was small. Very small and very, <laughs> very fast. It almost looks like a little fish. It looks larvae. like a little fish, yes. Yeah. Hatchet it's fish. Yeah. Yep. But that oh yeah, must now be you can see it. But that must be a very small one. Yes, very small. Whoa. Good eye video. Yeah. So Let's how many organisms do you reckon we would get on a cubic meter of water like that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even comprehend. Because there's the things that are even smaller than we can see that are yeah. in there. Yeah, and I imagine, I kind of alluded to it before, that there's avoidance behavior from the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And these longer transects kind of help with that we're able to say, stay stationary and hopefully yeah. let things pass us. Yeah. But I wonder yeah, if, center, Brian. if we were silent and if they didn't know we were there, what we would be seeing. So we do our best to do that. But Oh, and here's again one of these orbs that we've seen earlier. Oh, wow. oh it's actually... Oh. Oh. We're baffled here. <laughs> yeah, I don't even what, what know is what that? to think no, about that. Would that be a, some sort of forearm, radiolarian? <laughs> <Go. laughs> <We've> Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> we've got <laughs> we've got someone commenting here in the chat that looks like a COVID virus. <laughs> yeah, this is a radiolarian. It's beautiful. Oh, it's amazing. Thanks, bro. You too. Wow. Look, look what at a that. shot. Wow. <coughs> that does look just from another planet, doesn't it? I'll let it go. Yes. <laughs> um, if we have the ability, there is a request to collect, but I'm guessing it's already off the screen. Uh, yeah, that's not going. Yeah, I think... Uh, unfortunately gone but if we see another one we'll jump on it as soon as we can so another need to redeem myself Gregory a sample collection so I think we have actually just about five minutes to the end of the yep, that's where we're Brian yeah. let it come down to us so if there is something in view within the next no, couple no, of no. minutes that you think um, no. would be important to collect I'll for any ongoing studies, please do let us know. Yep, yep, coming in. Oh, another that's right, another one. Is there any yeah. Maddie, Maddie, when you are? You can can yeah, let's pull back, Brian. Yep. Drawers out. Okay. Suction light on. You can pull up uh, Mini Zeus, Todd. That is oh. very difficult. Oh my god, oh, that, that is so is small. Where is he? It's so small. <laughs> it is like the sign of a pinhead. Oh, 
Oh I'm tilting goodness, up a little. Yeah. Where is it? It's like right in front of me, but it's so small. Yeah. I, I don't see it. No. no. I think it's gone. It's below. All right. That was ridiculously small. Draw in. And not a single squid during the dive. That is very surprising to me. Yeah. I'm going to leave suction light on. Oh, there have it is. Yeah. Have they all been eaten? <laughs> yes. Another one? No. Something else. Uh, oh, so that's one of the siphonophores again, right? I think I'm... What do we have? Tomato? No, uh, we still have minute. about three minutes and a half. Okay. <laughs> Mike Vecchione is saying that the squids are all behind the ROV. <laughs> <laughs> They're watching. <laughs> We're just eating all the tasty stuff that we're grinding up as we go through. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's probably another one. Looks like a whole yeah. universe. It's above us, Brian. Yep. Incredible. Look at that. Maybe one more. So as shot. soon as we end the transect, the, the, the squid will come by to, to wave goodbye to oh us. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see little sucker punctures all over the back of the RV. <laughs> Dead center. Oh, that's another one. Is it? No, it's actually different, this one. This is just very smooth. Wow, look at that. So and such a bright center, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just glowing. Yeah, someone's saying here there might be an egg mass yeah, or we'll something. Go. It's so small. Yep. Yeah. Is that one? Mm, below me. Yeah. yeah that's that's oh, is that the si yeah? That's the siphonophore mm -hmm. siphono mm -hmm. that we me. thought was yep. a tinophore. Yep. Earlier on. And now we feel confident, we so it's going to be a tinophore. But it's interesting. Now we stopped seeing um, the jellyfish. Mm -hmm. Haven't we? We haven't seen them now for a while. The medusa. Yeah, we, I think we saw yeah. one at the very yeah. beginning. We might have one last one, Brian. Yep. Right there. Little lobe. That is a Tino 4. That is a Tino 4. <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> it has to be. Or I quit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> one more minute, pilot. And we've got just one okay. minute till the end of this transect now. Wow, this has been an amazing dive. It has. This is really where we get to see all of these exquisite life forms. And all right, Todd, so you got to take your turn out. Yeah, just come closer to underneath me. When you're yeah. done. All of the transects. Oh, yeah. Dead center. There's a huge amount of yep. Go ahead. relaxing take blue space. No, <laughs> and it's <laughs> also good to see that you oh. see also this donation How about that right to the, the, right the center? water column. Yeah, we saw yep. some things that, that yep. crossed across multiple transects, yeah. but it would be different abundances and distributions throughout. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's the siphon of forest, just a smaller one. Okay, mm -hmm. when you're done with this shot. All right, Brad, that's going to call it for us. All right, watch, Lee, this is now this oh, is, yeah, I is think that the end of the transect. Yeah, you yeah, can take it. it. That's, that's it, the that's the soul missus. <laughs> it's definitely taunting you on. Oh. If we could sample that, I don't you know if you have that? time. That would be a golden end to this cruise. You want to sample? This expedition, to this uh, dive, actually. No, we're gonna t if we're going to sample it, we need to take it. Yeah. We joked about it, Alan. <laughs> yeah, that he was coming we by at the end. The last second. <laughs> I think we're going to give it a it's shot. It's up, so let me come out of depth, come up a little bit. So stand by. You need to get your rotator down a little. It's up yep. to you, but. Yeah. No, that's your rotator. Okay. Uh, looks 
a little below it's you. Yep, coming slow, down. So it can wow. make its grand escape. No, I'm not breathing. <laughs> I just can't see it on any other. No, it's just there a little above me. Yeah, it's a little bit above, above you. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right, Todd, you know, get it's stuff. on. Okay. It's on gentle. I'll crank it if I need to. All right, there. Just go straight a little bit down, and you're good. There you go, that there. should be good. I'm cranking. There. It's above you. It's above the hose. Back, back, back. Yep, coming back. Now it's snagged on your gate. Yeah, I see that. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take your rotator. I'm rotating you down. There it is up in your... Yeah, I love the screen. That was a great attempt, though, guys. Thank you so much. How did that not go in? It was right on the tip of the suction hose. Right. Draw in. Alan, it's just not meant yeah, to be Yeah, you want to back up and yeah. be right underneath him. Lower swing arms out. Thank you so much. This was a brilliant time. Lower swing arms stow. Upper swing arms up. Stow. I'm going to come down to get us some delta here. Okay. HP walk, and yeah, thanks come on down. all the folks on the, in the chat room uh, for sharing your knowledge. Yeah, um, we definitely we, could not have done yeah, it without you. Not We're going to spin right. You're in a good this spot. Has been okay. Super interesting, really exciting, and also m very much thanks to you. So we will be coming up now and getting things prepped for tomorrow's dive, and tomorrow we're going to go back to the seafloor. Okay. Um, we will be diving on a ridge. Um, That's where I need to be. Ridge. Okay. Again, looking at geology and benthic communities. So, so thank you all very much for come joining back us and today. Then turn to starboard. Yep. Okay. And just tomorrow. The other way around. Turn to starboard and then just push out. Okay. Right? Yep. Pushing out. All right, as soon as you guys start coming up, I'm going to call the 15 minute. Okay. Straighten out there. Put a little forward way on. Get my Z bias spun up. Okay, I'll wait for you and then I'll come up. Auto heading's off. Auto heading off. We're ready for the 15 minute call out. Are you coming up? Coming up now. Auto depth off. I think you can get on the winch there. Okay, coming up. Go ahead, Bridge.
come down just a little bit. You good? You're at 30? I'm just bringing it up to 30. Okay. Great, you did okay. it now. You got it. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Back up you just can a bit. go ahead and disable Come down. Uh, port prop on rudder and then change the center rotation to midship, please. 